Hey, 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 back again. Pass. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, uh, good time. morning, depending on <laughs> where in the world you are watching the show and whether you've been up all night like Mr. Balloonit. We're only on part three. We are. I lost track of what part number we're actually We're on in. part three. We've got part three. numbers, we've got segments, we've got days. It's all too much and not enough coffee. Yeah, and as you can see, we've changed the back behind us here and you can see that in this Part. We have the wonderful Florence, we've got we Andre go. and Miguel, we've got Chris Adamo, we've got Marta, we have Leticia, and we have Dr. Bob Armstrong. And friends. <laughs> and his many friends. He's Absolutely. the one without the beard there at the bottom. Yes. Just in case he didn't know. So, um, if you were ke keeping up on Facebook, there was a lot of chatter about the fact that we didn't have anybody from France in our instructor team. So, um, oui. what we had to do was we had to remedy that. Oui. So, um, we have Florence. That's an awfully big TV for us to be on there, as Dom, I'm just saying, for having this little sleep. <laughs> yeah, please. Actually, part three is probably onwards good to start watching it on a smaller device. Yes, yeah. yes. That's the, the, the rule is is that as the part gets um, the, the higher, part the, gets bigger, gets higher, the device should the device get smaller. Should definitely and that get would smaller. Help. By the end of it, you should be watching it on a Nokia 8210. Yeah. That's, that's for, <laughs> for, for some of you out there. For, at Not least when you're on that. with us, anyway. At least when you're on with us. <laughs> Um, we can see that Florence is already in the chat, um, she so she is there to answer any questions that you might have. Yes, so I think I, I can already see some of the instructors for the rest of this section yep. start to get in the chat. The chat there, absolutely which is brilliant. We've got Miguel on there. I'm sure later on that Mr. C will arrive. I think later uh, Luke was offering coffees out for everyone again. He was. I tell you what, he sent a picture, and I don't know if you know Luke. But that Rioja, that Rioja is my favourite red. We'll send so the address. I was uh, <laughs> a little bit disappointed. But uh, yeah, that particular version. No care, parcel. Mine. It's in that wine. Of, wine wouldn't have been helpful right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. So Mr. Balloonetic said that he's going to go one better and actually watch it on a smartwatch. I think that is Part a smart would be a very idea. good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. C is sleeping as well, and they call him John Cena. Okay, so um, I think we should. What we should do is we should get this kicked off because exactly. um, very shortly we will be getting the um, the competition, the table display competition running because that's due to start in just under half an hour. Yep, we need to get set up for that. The guys are getting set up, and then we need to be ready for them. Yes, we shall be opening up um, the competition for everybody that's entering there. And Exciting don't worry, times. Jason, we'll do our best to get you involved as well. Um, Absolutely. We'll do our best. That's all we can promise. Right then. Are we ready to go? Yes. I think we are. Are we ready? I am. Okay, well, Let's if do you're it. ready, let's do it. Enjoy, people. Don't forget to share those golden hearts. Yes, absolutely. See those go golden nuggets. Exactly. Here we go.
en France, je suis Florence Buret, je suis très heureuse de passer quelques instants avec vous pour vous partager un peu de ma passion qui est sans nul doute la même que la vôtre, à savoir le ballon. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous montrer comment je travaille avec la Plexipole, qui est une structure qui nous permet de faire des centres de table ou même des colonnes puisqu'on a différentes hauteurs. Euh, et comment je vais customiser en fait, les ballons pour apporter une vraie originalité et un un vrai côté unique en fait à la décoration parce qu'aujourd'hui on a des clients qui parfois nous demandent des thèmes qui ne sont malgré la gamme importante de North Star et de Qualatex importante euh, qui ne rentrent pas des fois dans, dans ces gammes là et on est obligé d'improviser donc comment habiller et avoir des ballons qui vont être vraiment dans le thème de son client je vais vous montrer comment on va les customiser pour cela on va utiliser des ballons aluminium en taille 9 pouces ou 4 pouces on peut aussi utiliser du 8 pouces sans aucun problème. Attention, on ne pourra pas les faire flotter à l'hélium. D'accord Donc cette technique-là est utilisable essentiellement à l'air. Ensuite, on va utiliser un tissu qu'on va choisir en fonction du thème demandé. Là, j'ai choisi un thème danseuse et on est sur une petite fille, donc euh, voilà, en tutu rose, et un tissu qui sera donc quand même assez extensible, ce qu'on appelle du jersey. Je vais aussi utiliser du tulle, puisqu'on est sur un thème danseuse, et de l'intégration de matière, on va rajouter de la fleur séchée teintée en rose pâle. Donc pour cela, je vais vous montrer un petit peu, dans un premier temps, comment je vais habiller ma colonne, mon centre de table. On va, euh, pour euh, habiller donc la base, on va utiliser du tulle, et on va faire un petit peu le principe du pompon, D'accord, hop, je ferai les retouches après. On va utiliser un 160 pour le lier. Parce que même si on a une structure qui est en plexi, il est toujours plus joli d'avoir une base à lier. Voilà, donc je vais fixer avec mon 160. Je vais ensuite positionner donc, mon poster en sachant que là, pour avoir la couleur qui est sur mon tissu, j'ai utilisé dans le ballon rose, euh, enfin pour le ballon rose, j'ai stuffé le ballon, c'est-à-dire j'ai mis un ballon pink dans un ballon blanc pour avoir une couleur vraiment pastel. On va faire des duplettes pour faire ces clusters, mais des duplettes qui sont assez larges parce qu'on va être obligé de les entourer autour du de la tige et quand même on va bien mettre un peu large donc euh, pour que ce soit plus abîmé et pour éviter de euh, trop abîmer les ballons on va donc faire euh, une attache un petit peu lâche Cluster. Donc là, on va utiliser des tailles un peu différentes pour une base d'un petit peu d'organique, de déstructurer. C'est pas très gênant. Là, on a une base qui est tout assez simple, mais qui fonctionne. Je vais prendre mon ballon en cœur 9 pouces que je vais euh, utiliser côté impression, d'accord Puisque ça, en l'occurrence, ça sera caché par le tissu, même si le sens de fermeture est celui-ci. On va prendre la colle qu'on va appliquer généreusement avec un pinceau et on va bien acter en fait sur les bords du, du ballon pour être sûr que le tissu ne se décolle pas. Quand bien même, on peut toujours le rectifier. Euh, il n'y a absolument aucun souci. Vous allez se dire, on va peut-être prendre un pinceau un peu plus grand. Je vous l'accorde. Le pinceau est un peu fin. Voilà. 
Voilà, donc on répartit bien la colle, c'est important. Voilà. Ensuite, on prend son bouton de, de tissu. On va venir poser donc à plat, à l'envers, bien entendu. Et on va venir appliquer le ballon dessus. Et on aplatit bien. C'est plus facile de faire dans ce sens-là. Parce que si on fait dans l'autre sens, en fait, le tissu risque de se détendre. Et ça va friper, enfin, ça ne va pas forcément être très joli. Donc, il vaut mieux appliquer le tissu d'abord. Et ensuite, on vient appliquer le, le ballon par-dessus. On va ensuite découper autour. D'accord On va découper son ballon. Enfin, le tissu, pardon. Autour du ballon. Alors même si on n'est pas à ras du ballon, c'est pas bien gênant parce que vous allez voir que le tissu va vraiment épouser la forme euh, de la lumine. Et au pire, on peut toujours faire des petites retouches avant. Euh, idéalement, on utilise un, une paire de ciseaux qui coupe vraiment très bien. S'il y a des, des couturières ou des couturiers en incendie, ils auront forcément ça. Voilà. Donc là, on se retrouve donc avec un, un ballon somme toute euh, basique, presque. Et ensuite, on va donc le gonfler. Tant possible, on laisse un peu sécher. Là, on relève la queue et on va venir le souder. Comme on soude actuellement ce type de ballon. On s'y connaît, bien sûr. ressemble à un coussin. Voilà, ce qui est très agréable pour plus se toucher. On va faire la fermeture du ballon qui est très importante. Et quand on va remonter pour le fermer, on n'hésite pas à prendre le tissu, le bout de tissu qui aura dépassé un petit peu la languette, tout simplement pour qu'il soit pris dans le nœud. Fermeture. Voilà. Comme ça, on a un cœur qui est bien fermé. On garde la longueur ici du, du 160 pour pouvoir euh, donc venir accrocher son ballon sur sa composition. Donc là, ici, toujours, hein, je tiens à peu près là où je veux. Je vais poser la structure ici. Ensuite, on va s'occuper du haut. Donc, je vais utiliser un poster, pareil. Toujours avec des attaches un peu lâches. Je vais bien positionner un bras. Un autre petit cluster pareil, un petit peu déstructuré pour avoir un, une petite originalité. On peut que ce soit pas forcément trop original en ce moment. On va avoir une vie déstructurée, vie organisée. Voilà. Ok. Ensuite, on 
va utiliser euh, un bubble parce que c'est pareil, c'est un ballon que j'aime beaucoup. Et que j'ai préalablement personnalisé. Donc voilà, avec le motif de la danseuse que j'ai repris, le prénom de la petite fille et cette fameuse euh, fleur euh, teintée en rose que je suis venue poser en fait sur le ballon à l'aide de petites languettes, toutes petites languettes de Stretchy Balloon Tape. Ce, ce scotch est très bien parce qu'il est très adhérent et permet voilà, d'avoir des fixations importantes euh, et qui doivent tenir. Voilà. Donc j'ai euh, positionné ce bubble sur une maxi cup que j'ai recouvert d'un 11 pouces pour, pour, enfin, pour juste habiller et pour que ce soit plus joli et que je vais que j'ai habillé avec aussi un 160, ça va me servir pour sécuriser. Je vais venir donc insérer le ballon de col du 11 pouces à l'intérieur du tube avec la tige de la maxi cup. Comme ça, ça permet d'avoir bien la balance dans le tube. Et je vais sécuriser avec. je vais euh, positionner un petit cœur que j'avais préalablement fait, donc en 4 pouces ici, et que j'ai euh, agrémenté d'un morceau de, de 160, collé avec du stretchy balloon tape aussi, pour avoir une fixation de côté. Ça permet donc ici de venir habiller les côtés de sa structure. On a de la fleur ici, on va en rajouter en bas aussi pour l'équilibre de la composition. Donc on vient juste positionner ici le feuillage. On vient en rajouter un petit peu ici. Voilà, ça permet d'avoir un côté un petit peu plus féerique. Et on va venir aussi en ajouter un petit peu plus. Voilà. C'est pas la peine d'en mettre de trop non plus. D'accord. Ensuite, puisqu'on a du tulle en bas, on va faire un petit rappel juste sur le haut. Pareil, avec un principe de pompon en tulle. Euh, du, du 160 que je viens juste coincer sur le bas. Voilà. Et enfin, vous allez me dire, oui, mais la petite, là-haut, elle n'a pas son, elle a pas son tutu, c'est ça. Et voilà, et donc la touche finale, ça va être avec euh, donc, du double face. On va venir coller sur le bubble. Voilà. Alors, volontairement aussi, je ne chaminerai pas les ballons pour la simple et bonne raison qu'ici on a un aspect mat, on a un aspect un, un, aspect un peu doux. Si on vient pour faire briller les ballons, ça va trop contraster. Donc, euh, je, je vais laisser. Euh, la, la nature faire et laisser les ballons s'oxyder et devenir un peu, un peu mat euh, pour pouvoir avoir une uniformité au niveau de, euh, de, la, de la texture du tissu. Voilà pour ce qui est de ce petit centre de table pour une petite fille. Maintenant, on va passer au suivant.
Alors là, on va travailler sur un thème. Voilà, c'est un mariage. On nous demande un thème sur Paris. C'est étrange. Euh, avec des couleurs un peu tendance, comme le taupe. Euh, et, puis, euh, et puis, vraiment de la matière vraiment raffinée, élégante. Alors là, on va utiliser par contre la personnalisation au papier. C'est-à-dire que on, sur la même base de travail, c'est-à-dire sur la même... Euh, surface que, que le ballon a lu, on va utiliser des serviettes en papier. Hein. C'est le principe du déco patch, comme tout à l'heure, je vous ai expliqué que la colle qu'on va utiliser, c'est pour ça. Et donc là, voilà, on va utiliser ce type de motif avec la tour Eiffel, bien entendu. Et ici, une serviette avec un motif un peu gaufré, voilà, un peu en relief pour apporter vraiment un côté euh, euh, élégant et, euh, et un peu château de Versailles, hein, quand même. Voilà. Alors, euh, là, je travaille, j'ai pris, j'ai commencé à travailler en fait avec une structure un peu plus petite que celle de tout à l'heure. Euh, j'ai donc habillé le pied avec euh, la base un peu euh, gaufrée. Voilà. Et j'ai utilisé donc pareil un bubble, sauf que là on est sur un bubble 20 pouces, puisqu'on est sur une moins grande hauteur, euh, et que j'ai travaillé donc à l'horizontale. J'ai fait un point de fixation ici avec le. Le, le stretchy ballon tape, hein, voilà, et une composition basique, comme tout à l'heure. Voilà, c'est pas la peine de se compliquer parfois l'existence. Donc, pour la base, on va faire la même chose. On va travailler donc avec du ballon stuffé. Là, j'ai utilisé du mocha et du blanc. Voilà, donc le mocha en 5 pouces et le blanc. Pour pouvoir justement avoir cette couleur un peu taupe et, et pas franchement marron, puisque c'est pas ce qu'on recherche. Et donc là, on va voir comment c'est la base de son centre de table. Pareil, on fait une duplette avec une attache un peu, un peu lâche. C'est ce qui va nous permettre du coup d'aller vraiment s'entourer autour de, le, de, la, de la tige. Seulement, voilà, moi, ce côté un petit peu, euh, voilà, très, euh, très vertical me dérange un, toujours un petit peu. J'aime bien euh, faire un petit peu plus original. Donc, donc j'ai préparé en amont euh, donc le collage du, du papier sur le ballon. Donc, on est exactement dans la même technique que tout à l'heure. On en colle le ballon, on pose sa feuille à plat, on pose le ballon par-dessus et on aplatit. Voilà, d'une, parce que là, le, ballon, le papier est beaucoup plus fragile. Et comme il est vite imbibé de, de colle, il peut facilement se, se déchirer. En sachant que sur les papiers qui sont imprimés comme ça, vous avez une double couche. D'accord Vous avez le papier qui est imprimé et vous avez une pellicule derrière qu'il faut enlever. Parce que sinon, ça ne, ça ne tiendra pas. C'est la première couche qui va se coller et pas la seconde. Donc on va utiliser que cette partie-là. Donc on pose la, la partie à plat, on encolle le ballon, on vient le poser par-dessus et on aplatit, on laisse sécher. Là c'est pareil, si on a des problèmes de, 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 de décollement, on vient remettre un petit peu de colle. Et on vient positionner dans les plis du ballon. Et du coup on aura quelque chose de vraiment... On aura vraiment le sentiment que c'est le, le, le ballon qui est imprimé comme ça. Et donc là, en fait, je vais venir positionner ce ballon-là sur le côté. Encore une 
encore une fois, on accompagne en fait. Hein, le... Voilà, pour avoir un côté un petit peu de travers, c'est voulu. Là, je vais couper l'excédent. Voilà. Ici, je vais venir rajouter un petit euh, cœur. un autre petit cœur euh, avec la matière un petit peu gaufrée sur le bas pour faire le rappel. Seulement, euh, voilà, je voudrais, puisque c'est pour un mariage, il faut quand même que ça fasse mariage. Là, ça fait quand même un peu, pas urbain, mais bon voilà, c'est pas forcément, ça manque un petit peu encore d'élégance. Là, je vais utiliser donc de la dentelle. Voilà, j'aime bien faire le mélange des matières. Donc de la dentelle, pareil, un petit peu stretch, hein, c'est toujours plus agréable à travailler sur les ballons. Et euh, là, ce que je vais faire, c'est que je vais euh, venir positionner ma dentelle euh, sur mon bubble. Pour... Mais seulement, je vais devoir faire un point d'accroche. Donc, j'avais noté auparavant. Donc, il me faut le stretching là, il est normal. Voilà, je vais faire donc mon approche avec un bout de 160. Alors j'aime bien 160 pour des petites, euh, des petites accroches comme ça qui n'ont pas énormément de tension parce que c'est suffisant. Après, quand on doit faire des choses qui ont besoin d'être un petit peu plus solides, on va plutôt utiliser du 260. Ça, ça va me permettre de venir accrocher ma dentelle. Donc, c'est pas celle-ci, elle est large. Voilà, donc j'ai fait un lien. L'idée, c'est vraiment de déstructurer en fait le, la composition, d'accord Ici, on va faire un rappel encore une fois parce que euh, forcément, on a de la dentelle, on a de la matière ici. On va venir en rapporter en bas. Là, pour ça, je vais utiliser donc un, un diamond clear en 5 pouces avec un morceau de dentelle. Donc, je ne vais pas forcément le gonfler de trop. Je vais venir le recouvrir.
Vamos ver. Donc ça c'est pareil, il faut penser à ce genre de petits, de petits accessoires pour des centres de table parce que c'est toujours une valeur ajoutée. sa structure. Voilà. Enfin, je vais juste rajouter une toute petite pointe de noir, vraiment très légère. Et on va rajouter un blanc. Alors j'aurais pu coller directement le ballon, mais en fait je préfère, ça me permet d'aller en dessous. Voilà. Le fait d'ajouter du moins là, c'est juste pour apporter du contraste un petit peu à la structure. Voilà. Après, on n'hésite pas à ajuster, bien sûr. Là, c'est vraiment pour vous montrer le mélange des matières et l'avantage que peut avoir en fait le fait d'utiliser la plexipole pour pouvoir y mettre sa matière. Donc, on va pouvoir y mettre du feuillage, on va pouvoir y mettre vraiment, vraiment, vraiment tout ce qu'on veut. Voilà, j'espère que ce cours vous aura plu, qu'il vous aura aidé. N'hésitez pas, si vous avez des questions, je suis à votre disposition. Je vous souhaite euh, une très belle fin de journée. À bientôt
Olá, eu sou o André. Olá, eu sou o Miguel. Hello, I'm André. Hello, I'm Miguel. Uh, nós somos de Porto, Portugal. We are from Porto, Portugal. Uh, e, e é a nossa segunda vez no Key Corner. It's our second time on Key Corner. E queríamos agradecer em especial ao Kit e ao Dom. We send a special thanks to Kit and Dom. E a toda a família Colatex. And for all Qualatex family. E também à Qualatex Portugal, ao nosso distribuidor Party Street. And to Qualatex Portugal and our distributor Party Street. A nossa empresa é a Casa dos Balões. Our company is Casa dos Balões. E hoje vamos falar de arranjos em tempo de pandemia. Today we will talk about uh, pandemic uh, arrangements. Uh, em, espe yeah. uh, em especial, um, arranjar. Especially airfield designs and the most sellable designs. Yeah. Espero que gostem. Estejam atentos que vamos mostrar quatro desenhos. Hope you like it. Uh, pay attention to this and we will show you four different designs uh, from to this pandemic uh, that we are suffering. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Ora, então vamos passar à apresentação dos dois primeiros desenhos. Let's show the first designs. Os dois desenhos que eu vou apresentar são dois desenhos de, do, do casal mais famoso da, da Disney. I will show two designs of the most famous couple, uh, Disney couple. Um, foi, -nos, uh, foi nos pedido há um tempo atrás para uma festa de, de 16 anos. Somebody asked us to this design to a birthday. Uh, e, e, e a ideia era tornar os desenhos mais minimalistas. And the idea was a minimal design. Mas antes de começar a apresentar os, os, os desenhos, vou-vos apresentar uma base feita. First, nós... first I will show you the base that we do. Yeah. Uh, porque em tempos de pandemia, como falamos já há pouco, é muito importante poupar dinheiro. Em pandemia, é muito importante poupar dinheiro e nós fazemos isso base. É uma base uma base de 5 minutos. Um, se entretanto tiverem curiosidade sobre a base, nós podemos explicar nas redes sociais. Se você tiver alguma pergunta, apenas comente e nós. We... We say how we do this. Ok. Vamos então começar com as famosas Deco Bubbles. Vou usar uma, de uma, uma Deco Bubbles de 20, clear. I will use one 20. 20. 20 Deco Bubbles. Clear. Para o desenho que eu pretendo, eu terei que pintar o, o balão. For this design I need to paint the balloon. Mas primeiro vou precisar de fazer uma marca. But first I need to make the design here in the bubble. Mesmo, mesmo no meio do, 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 do balão. In the middle of the balloon. Para fazer a marca vou usar um marcador Sharpie. I will use a Sharpie marker. And just draw in the middle. Faço primeiro a primeira linha. First line.
Fiz a segunda linha, second line. Eu, eu pretendo um, um traço muito fino. Primeiro lado. Agora vou fazer a marca no segundo lado. We'll do the same on the other side. Vou pintar entre as duas linhas, com o paint in the, in the middle of the lines. Já tenho então a minha linha marcada dos dois lados. I have my both sides equal. E agora vou começar na parte de colocar o balão dentro. Eu pretendo a cabeça. Vou, pretendo recriar a cabeça do, 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 do Mickey. Ou do da head of the, the, the Mickey. I use a, a 16 balloon inside. White. Estou a usar um balão de 16 branco. Vou primeiro encher com a mini colher. Já tenho o meu traço. Feito. Vou prender. Mas primeiro tenho que vou encher. Esta cor que eu pretendo, eu pretendo a base da, da cabeça a branco. I want my head in white. Now I will use um, we we'll use a uh, um, 26 to 60Q. Vou usar um 260 para prender. E agora, de seguida, de seguida eu pretendo que a parte de baixo da, da, da cabeça decide a want in red. A parte de baixo em vermelho. Vou precisar de a pintar. Primeiro, vou usar uma fita de papel. 
a paper ribbon. Yeah. Tape. Sorry. I will put this to go. mesmo em cima da, da, da linha para cobrir o lado que eu pretendo que não, que não fique pintado. I'll cover my white side because I don't want to paint on this side. First this and now I will use a newspaper to cover Portanto, tapar bem para que o resultado final não se veja tinta nenhuma vermelha. It's important to cover very well this side. Se tiverem alguma questão, vão comentando que eu respondo. Se não tiver alguma pergunta, por favor, me diga. Sabe mais uma para cobrir tudo. Podem ver, não é? Demora um pouquinho de tempo a cobrir esta parte. I need a little bit time to cover, but the, the result of the paint is very, very good. O resultado da pintura vai ser o que eu pretendo, por isso demoro um pouco mais a cobri-lo. Para o fazer no nosso sítio de trabalho, um, to do this on the work table, I need to put a, a, a paper to cover. Preciso de, de, de colocar um papel para cobrir. Eu vou usar uma, um, uma tinta ac, um, acrílica, acrylic paint. Spray, yeah. Because I, I, I want a, a, a beautiful uh, cover of the paint. I don't want to uh, like the the paint with, with the hand. I want a other result. Prefer a result of the spray than the 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 with the with the pencil. And now it's very simple. You don't need to be a painter.
vamos lá. We need, we need to, uh, I need to be focused because I don't want to paint my hand. Preciso me concentrar porque não quero pintar a minha mão. Perfect. Perfect red. You like it? Vocês gostam? Sim, consigo uma cor perfeita e sem sem escorrer. Vocês gostam? E como eu coloquei o papel, agora consigo colocá-la em qualquer parte, de maneira que ela não não vir. Uh, I don't know in English. I need my assistant, please. <laughs> Miguel. Tell again. Yeah. Como eu usei o papel, agora consigo colocar o balão sem ele virar. Uh, because I use this paper, I can just Uh, put the balloon on the floor or on the table, and uh, this, the balloon will not turn. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> okay. Agora, enquanto seca. Let vou usar, dry. vou começar com, 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 com a base para depois apoiar a cabeça. I will start with the, the base, a simple base, because I want a, a minimalist design. Preciso de um desenho minimalista, preciso de criar uma base uh, mais, mais simples. Vou encher os primeiros balões de first cluster for and and off primeiro cluster a uh, quatro e meio um dois três quatro ou medida Vocês podem ver se eu encher quatro vezes vai me dar mais ou menos o valor de quatro e meio for pumps for an and off. Ok? Agora vou prender lá embaixo. Ainda não vou colocar o segundo cluster porque vou querer prender primeiro uma um I will put the name and I need to wait for the, the, the second cluster. Agora vou fazer o topo. Vou usar a mesma medida. Uma medida de 3 primeiro em cima. A 3 cluster. Pump. A 3. Ok. Good for me. One. Okay. 
This is the, the first cluster. Now, second. Primeiro cluster, eu vou encher três. O segundo, eu vou encher a dois. Porque quero que realmente a base seja uh, o, o fundo da bubble tenha um cluster, clusters pequenos. Vou encher a dois. Pump, two. Yeah. Small cluster, yeah. cluster mais pequeno. Quando estamos a colocar na base, é sempre difícil colocarmos aqui em cima e segurá-lo bem. Ok. Se virarmos a base ao contrário, será mais fácil para, para trabalhar no cluster de cima. Fazemos o mesmo processo. Sim. Primeiro cluster, o first cluster, ok? Não, não sei. Easy. Fácil. Agora que já tenho a minha base em cima colocada, só ajustar. Okay. Vou fazer outro cluster de três. cima it's the same uh, size of the, the, the cluster on the top agora como quero aprender o nome we put the name here like this but I need uh, 260. Sorry. Scissor. Where is my, my scissor? I need my assistant again. I only need a, a little bit. Só preciso de um bocadinho para aprender, porque depois consigo ajustar para onde eu quero. Sistema, vamos ver. Vamos pôr o cluster. Vamos lá. 
the mic. E agora eu vou passar a, a parte de cima do topo to put the, the, the head of the Mickey here. Primeiro, terei que retirar todo o jornal. The garbage, no por lixo. Ok. Good. And now I need the. Um, the... Preciso das orelhas. Do Mickey. The ears. The ears. Ok. Sorry. My English. It's not so good. I will inflate the balloon eight. Colocar duas orelhas. Do mesmo tamanho. Sem. Sem size. Ok? Vou cortar esta parte. O que é que da neck? E para, e para colocar as, as orelhas aqui, to put the ears here, I will use a, um, a balloon, balloon bound. Fantastic. Tape. Apenas preciso, isto é uma fita fantástica, apenas preciso de um bocadinho para colar. Vou usar o um bando mesmo perto do, do, do pescoço. Close to the neck. Like this. Wait. A little bit. Agora vou colar meço o meio aqui vou colar com a mesma diferença need to, to calculate the, the middle and put wait a little, a little bit Same, near to the neck, mesmo que fiz na outra, perto do pescoço. 
Preciso daqui aquecer um, um bocadinho. Wait a little bit. Tenho que esperar um bocadinho para colar. Ok. Good. Agora vou usar apenas dois bocadinhos de, de vinil. Sempre um bocadinho difícil de escolar. Como podem ver, a tinta seca rápido. Já dá para colar o vinil. mais ou menos a mesma distância It's not the same size Ok Don't worry I use a uh, 260. This. Agora vamos passar para o segundo desenho. Ora então, para o segundo arranjo da Mini. For the second arrangement, Mini. Eu usei, eu usei a mesma técnica do Mickey em todo o desenho, só apenas não o pintei. I use the same technique, but it's not painted. Ok? Apenas colei os olhos em vinil. I attached, attached these stickers. Ok. E agora vou uh, ensinar como fazer o laço em balões na cabeça da Mini. Now I will show what, how to do the necklace. Ok. Neck. It's not neck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The... 
para isso vou usar. Para isso vou usar dois balões de coração, latex. I will use two latex. This is five, five inches hard balloon. Okay. E dois balões de, de, de cinco polegadas por meio. And two round uh, latex five inch. E dois balões de, de, de cinco polegadas de And two de, uh, five inch balloons dots clear. Vou colocar o balão vermelho dentro do balão de pintas. I will double stuff the balloon. With the red inside the clay. E agora vou encher os dois corações primeiro. Vou dar uma pequena para que tenha o formato do coração mais perfeito quando encher. Will inflate the heart in English? Yes. Or balloonish. Yeah. Balloonish. Yeah. Nós falamos em três línguas. We can speak three languages. Yeah. English, Portuguese and Balanese. Balanese, Balanese. Ok. Any doubt, please comment. Ok. Agora vou prender um coração no outro. We'll attach to a heart. Yeah. E agora vou encher apenas com uma bombada este balão. Just one bomb. Agora as pintas estão pequeninas. Eu vou. The dots are small. Vou prender. Apenas vou dar um bocadinho de folga no, no pescoço para o que eu vou fazer Leve a seguir. Long neck. Ok. Agora, meio. And just start my middle. Porque assim fico com umas pintas maiores para o efeito que eu quero. You will have bigger, bigger dots. Ok. Pronto. Another one. Passa-me o pescoço. Long neck. And turn. Alguma dúvida? Any doubt? Deixem um comentário. Comment. Ok. Agora vou prender os dois corações no meio de casa. Agora, o processo de prender é muito simples. To attach, it's very simple. Vou usar a stretchy tape. I will use stretchy balloon tape. Cut. Vou cortar um bocadinho. Cut just a small piece. Vou usar também meio balão 260. Cortar o meio. Cut in the middle, one balão 260 Q. Solto uma lateral da fita. 
take off one side. E vou escolher o melhor ponto, não a meio das orelhas, mas bem encostadinho na frente. And just choose the best point. Ok. Retirar desta fita. Wait just a few seconds. Já fica presa. And you have a strong point. Yeah. Escolher o local bem bom. Do you like it? Vocês gostaram? Agora vou passar a vez ao Miguel. It's my vai turn. continuar com os desenhos. Don't leave me alone now. <laughs> I will show two more designs. Eu Hope you like it. it. I will go to a coffee with a Mickey and me. <laughs> vou com café aqui. Better, better to deliver this. Yeah. Melhor ir entregar isto. Make money, make money. <laughs> Now I will show you uh, one different design, air filled again. Agora vou mostrar um design diferente, uh, cheio a ar. And my inspiration is the new Qualatex for B. E a minha inspiração é o novo balão de Qualatex da Bahia. For this we need to do normal cluster, 8 inches. Para isto vou usar um, um cluster normal, and, uh, uh, inflado a 8. And just turn it twice, okay. duas vezes. And I will use quick link 6 uh, inches. E vou usar quick link de 6 pegados. Again, normal cluster, turn. Uma vez mais, apenas rodo duas vezes. And I will just attach to 8 inches alone. Turn. Turn. Apenas vou Turn. atar ao balão ao cluster de 8. And I will <coughs> attach one balloon weight. I, I do. I did this with water. Vou atar com um peso de água. And just turn, turn, start. Está feito. Now I will use one. Number from North Star, jelly number. Vou usar um jelly number, do, um número de jelly da North Star. I love these numbers. Eu amo estes balões. And for this, it's better to cut these hairs. É melhor cortar estas partes. Thank you. 
and here the same. Aqui o mesmo. And skip. Preciso de que aquele pincel que eu gostei um bocado. Vou buscar. I need help from my assistant. <laughs> Here I will use one 24 inch deco bubble. Vou usar uma deco bubble de 24 polegadas. Parece uma bomba. A bomba. For this we need to one we will need one 260Q balloon. Vamos precisar de um balão 260. And now, we will do just some fun in the back of the other. Agora vamos apenas dar uma pequenas mãos na back of the other. And the number we will just use one stick. Apenas vou usar um apenas um pequeno pau. You can use a draw or something. And you just turn, turn. And go back. And turn. Here, same. Don't worry. Aqui podem fazer trago todos sem sem problema. And we will just insert here. Then we will just put the ball inside the bubble. Now you can just leave the draw. Agora podem deixar tirar Just pull. Need to be patient and careful. Tem que um bocadinho paciência e ter cuidado também para não danificar o balão. Especially with the valve, you need to be careful. Especialmente com com a valve é preciso ter algum cuidado para não ficar confuso. Now we have the balloon inside the bubble. Agora temos o balão número dentro da bubble. You can start. <coughs> Podem encher a bubble, devem encher a bubble primeiro. Need to be patient to do this. Temos que ter alguma paciência para fazer isto.
I inflated the number, and now we can start inflating the type of level. Primeiro em X, o número, e agora vou encher o total da data bola. Now, I go again to the number. Agora vou novamente ao número. We know that this is good when you don't have these wrinkles here. Sabemos que a double está bem cheia quando já não temos as rugas. Just turn to both here and with two sixty. I don't need. Total 260. You can hang this or go to here and just turn. Apenas preciso de um 260 para prender. Rola algumas vezes. Posso aguentar o balão para depois finalizar com um nó. Now we will just test this water design. Qualquer questão, qualquer questão podem perguntar. Yeah, any question, just ask. You don't need to do a lot with the two things, you just turn, 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 turn. Precisam fazer um 260 apenas para baixar algumas vezes para que eles fiquem Now, I have here some. I will need the 160 Q. Vou precisar de um, de um balão 160. Not fully inflated, just get this. Não precisa encher totalmente. Pull it out. We will do small flowers. Vou fazer uma pequena flor. For me, it's important the time that I spend to do the design. So, we have to be quick. Time is money. Para mim é muito importante o tempo que se perde a conseguir um design. Temos que ser rápidos para poupar dinheiro. Tempo é dinheiro. Just turn, turn, and now we'll do with a small double. Leave it to the front and turn. Okay, now bubble. We put more movement for our friend. Okay. Here. For my turn. Okay. Okay. You have a small flower and we will just attach here to the quick link. And I'm going to bring it quick link. And I have more flowers already. And you can use more flowers. Um, um, um. 
and it's done. Okay. <clears throat> now I will use this small V. Agora vou usar esta pequena abelha. Passar a casa aqui. This, this foil, small foil, doesn't have a valve, so we need to seal the, the valve. Este foil não tem valve, por isso vou precisar de selar a valve. Gently inflate the foil. Temos que encher com cuidado. And just turn to keep the air. Rodo umas duas vezes para conservar o ar. Press and wait 10 seconds. Pressione. You can count with me. Pressione e aguento 10 segundos. Podem contar comigo. Again. For Vou security. Apenas por segurança. Any doubt? Ask. And we have our small bee. Já temos a nossa pequena abelha. Now we I use one two sixty and one one sixty q. Vou usar um duzentos e sessenta q e um cento e sessenta q. E vou inserir o cento e sessenta dentro. And I will insert one sixty q inside the two sixty. Eu vou inserir o 160 dentro do 260. Here, at the end of the 160, que no fim do just do a knot. No fim do 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 160 vou fazer um nó para para segurar. Okay. Now to inflate, you just you will inflate only the 260. Vou inflar apenas o 260. And you need to hang here the 160. And you will do this. Okay. With some hair out. Deixe sair algum ar. Ok. Então. Aqui é a hora do small cluster upside. Eu vou fazer um pequeno cluster. Em cima. E eu posso turn and make four bubbles. Small bubbles. You can create a small cluster. Vou criar aqui um pequeno cluster em cima. Okay. With a small Piece of 260. Apenas com uma pequena parte do 260. I will create, create this attach point. Criar um ponto de fixação. Here, directly in the valve. Aqui diretamente até a valve. Okay. 
now that we have our B, like magic. E agora já que temos a nossa abelha, como magia apareceu outra. It's impossible to have only one B. É impossível ter apenas uma abelha. Vamos apertar o cluster, apenas rodar o 260, uma vez mais. Now to the top, I will use stretchy balloon tape, just a small piece. Para o topo vou usar a fita stretchy, apenas um bocadinho. Small piece of 260 e apenas um bocadinho também de 260. And Just glue it to the deck of bubble. Apenas vou colar na deck of bubble. Do some pressure. Fazer um bocadinho de pressão. Now, like magic again. And the small bee, the mother bee. E agora tenho a velha mãe. With that small piece again. It's too sexy. Vou prender um 260 à baba. I will turn, 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 turn. Vou roubar, roubar, roubar. Till roubar. the end of the ball. And just do double knot. And we can now. We'll do the same process here. We'll do the same process here. Dar um nó. We have a strong connection. Connection. Temos aqui um ponto de fixação forte. Now we can attach the bee to the deck of a bee. Agora podemos prender a abelha à deck of a bee. Twice. And with a three-inch cluster, e com um cluster de quatro a três, here, turn, and with two sixty, done. You like it? Você gosta? Now with the on the silhouette camel, I get this name. Com a silhouette camel, cortei este nome. Add to my design. And now I have this printed, the same design, I have bees printed. We just take one off.
Se një më shëbë jesh impresës. And the final design presents the alien. You want this be more like this, and as you see, as you can see, this is airfield, no William, and a great design, I think. Como podem ver, é um desenho cheiar, não tem hélio, e é um desenho bonito. So. Stay here to the second design. Now we will do one number bouquet or maxi bouquet. Agora vamos fazer um arranjo de número, um, um maxi bouquet. Uh, and for this, uh, as we don't have so much time to this, I already inflated these clusters. E como não temos assim muito tempo, eu já enchi, já preenchi estes uh, clusters. And this is the size is, is eight. Tamanho is, oito. This one is four and a half. Este é quatro e meio. Now I will use dacron line. Vou usar uh, fio dacron. Just do not here. Zoom so, aqui. And start adding. More clusters. Para juntar mais clusters. Just press and turn. Eight figures. Faço um oito. Again, another cut cluster. Press and eight. Para o mesmo, o mesmo processo. Another one. Thank you. Press eight. Pression number eight. Another one. And it's done. Está feito. Only for security. Dar um nome à segurança. And you can cut. Oops. Now that we have the base. Agora que tenho a base. I will add eight weight, water weight. Vou juntar um peso d'água. You can just attach to a balloon neck. Vocês podem prender o balão de This foil balloon, happy birthday. Agora vou usar este foil de happy birthday. Awesome. And pay attention to this, uh, I saw this many times. E prestem atenção a isto porque eu vejo isto muitas vezes. And I don't like with just a few seconds you can turn this ceiling to the same side. Esta costura ao mesmo lado. E da 260 again. Just 
60, novamente. Make sure that you use the same color of the 260 from the base. Tenham atenção na cor do 260, usar a mesma cor da base que é para não se notar. And I will add this to my design, just turn it to me. Vamos prender novamente, o mesmo processo. Turn it, and it's done. Let's keep the base here. Vamos manter a base aqui. I will have these 18 numbers. Tenho este número 18. And pay attention to this. I, uh, I need to connect the numbers. Tenho atenção a isto, eu vou precisar like de juntar os números. And I will use balloon bound. Eu vou usar balloon bound, but with this foil and non-stick surfaces, we need to remove the ink, and for that you can use alcohol, for example, or easy. Nós temos que conectar os balões. Vamos usar balloon bound e podem usar álcool. You can use your Sharpie and just paint the balloon. Vocês podem usar o, o, o marcador Sharpie e apenas pintar na zona onde vão colar. Let it dry. Deixar secar. I already made here. You can get this in three. Podem cortar a fita. Here, same process. Mesmo processo. And same right. Just make some pressure. Is all of some? <clears throat> Again. I don't need too much. Vou colocar novamente uma ponta de 260. To the 8. Directly in the valve. Diretamente na válvula. As I made before, you can cut the ears that you don't need. Sim, como já fiz antes, vou cortar estes. But for this, I don't need this one too. Não preciso deste? This one. <laughs> this one and get here the same process aqui o mesmo processo Now we are ready to 
Agora estamos prontos para juntar os balões. Just take off paper. Tiramos o papel. And press. E pressionamos. Another 260. Number. Mais um 260. Este, este maior. Directly to the valve again. And uma vez mais na valve. Two and not. One and two. And, as you can see, sim, podem ver, o ponto de fixação é forte. Strong connection. Now we can start thinking where we will attach the balloon. Agora podemos começar a pensar onde é que vamos prender o balão. I like it here, and I will just do a mark. Faço uma marca. And the same process here, o mesmo processo. Now, stretchy balloon tape. Agora vou usar stretchy. For sake, I use two pieces of stretchy. I will just You can use one, but I like to 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 do it twice. Podem usar uma, mas eu por segurança prefiro usar duas. Just press. Pressione. Now, again, the knot. Agora vou fazer novamente o um nó. And we will attach number 8 directly here. Vou amarrar o número 8 aqui. As you can see, this is strong. Como podem ver, continua forte com a fixação. Now, number one is just seven to sixty. And the moon abas. Now I will do with one pump. 
a small cluster. Vou fazer um cluster de, de três, apenas com uma bombada. Make sure that you start here with the pump. Tenho certeza que começam do início para ter a mesma medida. Now that we have our balloons, we temos os nossos balões to do some structure thing with a small cluster. Vou fazer uma um pequeno cluster para estruturar o desenho. 3 inches. Cheio a 3. I'm not worried too. É natural que se puxe a conexão, mas depois dá para juntar novamente. Now to finish our design. Agora para acabarmos o nosso design. Two sixty chrome. Two hundred sixty K chrome. Rose gold. Rose gold chrome. Okay. We will just. Abraçar os números. We need to. Vamos precisar de dois. Just. To show everything here, you can just turn. Here we go. Get put that. Do the knot twice or never. No more. Now. Vou ajustar os balões. With a pinch twist. Is there only a pinch twist? Put all in place. And now to finish the design. E agora para acabar o design. We will use one two sixty steel chrome. Vamos usar novamente um duzentos e sessenta que. Rose gold. Rose gold. We will just create something like this. 
Thanks for the honor. Thank you. Thanks for the honor. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And do a small bow. Let's do a little bit of a Hold on. Now, I'm going to cut. And do a lot. As you can know, cut and same here as your middle. Thanks for watching us. Eh, Sigam-nos nas nossas redes sociais. Follow our social media. E não se esqueçam. Vejam aqui corner. Don't forget. Watch aqui corner. Bye. Bye. Well, hello everybody. Chris Adamo here from the Balloon Crew and BalloonPro.co in Sydney, Australia. Well, to be specific, we're in the basement underneath my house. Now, the reason why <laughs> it's the daytime and there's two factors. The shop is completely full. There's lots of people, lots of noise. Okay, we can't have that. The second thing is it's a really bright day outside and I'm filming during the day and I needed a place where it was nice and dark. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that was because today we're talking about balloons and lighting. Now you can see we've got some white balloons, um, obviously my favourite. I think I wrote in the, um, uh, one of the Qualitex publications a while back, my favourite colour is white because what I love about white balloons is they're malleable. You add a light source and you can convert it into any colour that you want. Now lighting is something that's been around um, in the events industry of course for a very long time. But I don't think lighting and balloons as a union, as a combination, um, as a value add for your business has been capitalized as much. So in this time here with you today, I want to show you lots of different types of products that we offer, um, products that are readily available online, uh, that are inexpensive, well, kind of, that you can use to integrate with your balloon decor. So stay tuned and let's get to it.
Let's start from the smallest and we'll work our way up to some of the larger, more technical um, light sources that I use in my business. Now in preparation for this class, I actually didn't buy anything extra. Everything you see here was lying around my store. Some I might use weekly, monthly, or I haven't used, haven't used in a while. But I still want to use this time to show you all of the, the different things that I've used over time and perhaps their, their applications and maybe some pros and cons as to why and maybe why not I use some of these products. I should state um, you are going to be anywhere around the world and you're going to find it difficult to find some of these products. Some of them will be easy, some of them might be a little bit harder. I've spent a very long time looking. I use eBay or AliExpress or, or similar. Um, Amazon, some of our local uh, suppliers in Australia um, sell them. Some of the more specific products and some of them are quite generic and used for other purposes. Of course, let's start with the smallest, um, just little LED lights. Uh, now, that's a single LED inside and they're designed to be in a single balloon. Depending on the weight of, of your light, I'm not going to talk about specific brands. I'm not going to say this weighs that, therefore use it for X, Y, Z size, um, you have to figure that out for yourself because this one brand is probably discontinued. I've got a hundred of them lying around. And in the 20 years I've been in the industry, I've seen maybe six or seven different manufacturers of single use LED lights. So of course it's, it's got a great um, purpose being that they're affordable and they can go in a single balloon. I would use this in a 16 inch or a three foot. Now LED, stands for light emitting diode. And be careful when you buy them because they could be a bright white, a warm white, or what's called RGB, which means red, green, blue. And between the three colors there, they might have a controller in which you can vary any color that you like. So uh, for balloons that go inside white, uh, so lights that go inside white balloons, I would use a, a bright white. Um, when we get to our copper wire, LED, I would prefer a warm white. Chances are because that copper wire is going to be external outside the balloon, whereas the bright white, which is a little bit brighter of course, uh, will be inside the balloon. I want to maximize the color of the balloon itself being illuminated. So just to show you, you open it up. In this case, you take out the little stop that stops the, uh, the terminals touching. And in this case, you just screw it in and that illuminates that. Now throughout this uh, presentation, I'm gonna be hitting this switch here, which will cut out all of the lights and probably play absolute havoc for the autofocus on my phone. So we'll, we'll find out, see how that goes. But I wanna also just show you from time to time how a single light will respond amongst a junction of balloons. So there you go. Uh, let's turn that off. Now about, um, I think four years ago, did I start to use what's called copper wire LED, which are, which are these guys. So it's a uh, copper wire, um, it's all very low voltage and being copper, it can sort of hold a shape. Um, it's quite pretty, it's relatively waterproof um, and they're so, so affordable. So this one here is a warm white, battery operated copper wire. So something like a battery pack wouldn't be able to be lifted uh, by helium. Um, but in this case, you can see we've actually just used a um, black uh, fabric to wrap the, the battery pack itself. And that becomes the weight with a little bow, perhaps a satin bow. Um, and that's a very inexpensive weight combination for a helium arrangement, which we'll show you next. Um, so many different forms. And let's start with the smallest here. We have a local supplier that sells these, but I've also found them online and I'm sure they're quite um, readily available. And they come with two little batteries and you remove the, the film, turn it on and away you go. Now these will be lifted with a deco bubble, uh, a 16 inch and of course a three foot with helium. So when we do our deco bubbles, um, we can actually feed this inside the balloon and it'll lift that such that you can almost hide the battery pack up underneath the nook of the balloon without it having to be a separate weight that is external. So let's 
um, just have a look for the color of warm white and see how it responds to our balloons here. Quite a long one. They come in actually 20 meter lengths. And what I'll show you next is, um, is a, a great little trick on how they're not battery operated at all. But let's first look at the color. Now, you probably see here, I've actually got a ribbon roll spool. So that's just from our five mil curling ribbon. Because once we've used some of the really big ones, you want to really make sure you don't tangle them because it's so easy to tangle. So I just have some of these lying around and I bring them to the job and we wrap it up uh, so it's a little bit easier to work with and not tangle. So let's just turn it on. I always like to work with it on. Um, why? Well, I, don't know, I, I can just see how it responds to the balloons in real time. And it also allows me to, if I do make it like a break, the copper for instance, I can see just then and there when it's broken. So let's just turn these lights off. And the battery pack, you can hide it amongst the modules of balloons somewhere, like so. And I'm paying no attention at all to the specific design in which I'm placing it. Um, and normally I would stand up and stand where the camera is and have a look. But I assume that looks quite cool. It looks quite cool from my angle here. Um, super, super simple. And where's my light switch? And very easy uh, to install and work with. So copper wire, LED. What I have in front of me here are, are some packs where you'll see that it's actually USB powered, okay? So this really just like blew me away. Um, we've done jobs for uh, installations for Christmas where they're mains powered. So it connects to a, a USB um, five volt uh, power adapter plugs into the wall, set and forget, and I came back four weeks later with this installation because lots of foils. Um, and it was still on, still works perfectly, and we reuse it time and time again. Of course, batteries will only last a few days, depending on, or a day, depending on how many, what sort of length of the copper wire strand is and, of, and how many batteries you're using. Um, this here, I think, is about a 20 meter um, length. And you can see there's some smaller ones. You know, I just go crazy on eBay. And that's like another smaller piece. And, um, you know, we have heaps of them. I, I've done a job once where we used a whole bunch of deco bubbles, clear bubbles, where um, hundreds of them. And we had this giant chandelier rigged up into the roof of this uh, ballroom. And I probably used maybe 200 meters of this copper wire LED strand. And when it was illuminated, it was like looking up to the stars. And every single um, individual light source was reflected from silver and clear and absorbed and, and bounced around the whole place and it was a very mesmerizing experience. Um, and these might be $10 each, give or take, and they're reusable. So we, um, here's just a, a USB um, power adapter. You can get them with multiple ports on the outside. You can even buy like five or six, like a, a whole USB board. And I'll just show you quickly as an example. That's gonna plug in there. And you can just keep plugging them in. You can put them on timers, all kinds of stuff. And uh, very malleable and very fun to work with. So, but that of course is an external um, light source. So that's our LEDs. Um, put that to the side. Now this here was a bit of fun. We did a neon um, event, so we had um, uh, balloons that we actually spray painted neon on the inside and I found these online as a neon um, battery pack with it's, it's a, I guess a rope light of sorts but in a neon hue so I'll turn that light off again here for you it was a uh, let's even turn what we do there let's turn this off so we're not competing And so this was the light source hanging from the balloons. And you can just see, of course, it's very important, and you can't even see me as I talk, I assume. It's very important that you work out what kind of light source is gonna be at the event. Um, and you can even sort of write names and um, do all kinds of things. If you had a balloon wall, you could, uh, <laughs> you could sort of draw a shape of a character um, out of that rope light. So once again, it's all very uh, low voltage, 
really easy to work with. It even has these effects. So just to show you, you can have strobing and all kinds of stuff. So once again, this, I found this online, a few dollars, um, not very expensive at all. And, and we picked it all up ready for the next time. If you saw the introduction, <laughs> I haven't used it again since, but pretty cool. It depends on what you're doing and, and what the client's paying for. Get that out to the side. Um, last thing I want to show you in our introduction to lighting, the, where we're looking at the smaller items, these are probably the most used lights that I do in my business. A couple of wires getting up there, but very, very close. So they're called super size balloon lights. Um, many distributors all around the world will stock them. If they don't, you can go to the website and, and find out. I think they can ship, um, I think they're, they're, they're an Australian company, but they ship all around the world. So super size balloon lights. I, I have seen similar products online on Amazon and whatever. These are just in a different category of quality. Um, so I always buy the, the, these, the right ones. I just find them to be brighter and more reliable. So they come with a remote or you can buy a remote separately. Um, plugs in with three AA batteries, which I've prepared earlier. And uh, funny story, we, we, um, oh, I never use the batteries twice because of course the event might, you, know, you might turn them on a few hours before the event and might be 12 hours of runtime. There's only a few hours left depending on the colors. Um, so I always take the batteries out and we use them in my kids' headphones <laughs> in the car. So I've got a whole bag of it depending on the event. So uh, we've got our, oh, I think I moved this off. There we go. Cool. Uh, so when you're working with any light source, always turn it on well in advance, test it. Um, now, depending on what you're doing with them, I've seen a million uses for supersized balloon lights. Behind me here, and we'll talk about this later, this is a Parkan. Um, and this is a battery operated one. And it's pretty much the same as this, but exceptionally cheap and almost disposable. Um, of course, the brightness and everything's different, but they have the same applications. The other great advantage, and I think the original intent when it was made is that it can go inside a helium inflated three foot balloon and float. So we'll show you um, how we get that into balloons soon. But you know, other applications are just as, as, a, as a wash. So if I just place one here, one there, and we kill our lights, you can see already I've got a wonderful light source for these two white organic displays. Um, you can now also hide it inside the modules like so. And I've just, I haven't rigged it or anything. Um, and the, the wonderful thing about color, and I tell this to all of my clients with an external light source is you can see how with white balloons, the color is brightest of course, where it hits the design and then it slowly dissipates as it works its way through the balloons. So it doesn't really matter where you put it almost, it will create whoop, a, I just dropped it. It'll create a lovely, a lovely tonal variance from bright to soft. Let's turn that back on. Okay. So what I just want to show you now is how we put these in a three foot balloon. So depending on where you get the, the light, it might actually come with um, uh, a 260Q already tied on, but uh, let's just turn it off. So we feed it through, it comes with a, um, a little uh, hook or, or a, a uh, what are we gonna call that, a little nib on the back, and you feed a 260Q with a stick, sade stick or something pointy, feed it through. I always go halfway, okay, and then tie that off. Double knot it, okay? And then for the fun part, it's best to do this with two people if you can. Open up the three foot balloon, pop it in, but you don't wanna let go of those 260 cues. There you go. Okay, and then we're ready. Now the lovely thing about these lights and many lights like it, they're infrared. 
So the remote itself, can, the signal can travel through material like latex. Like so, see so we're changing the colors. So at this point I always test it. And if I'm doing lots of them and I'm prepping in advance, I'll put a rubber band, pop that aside, keep working, keep working. So then when we get on site, we take that rubber band off. We've got our helium tank, or in this case, we're going to inflate it with air. Um, now this here is just a uh, leaf blower. I uh, put something on YouTube many, many years ago on how we use these to inflate cloud busters. I also use them for three foots. Um, why? Well, because you don't have to have the PowerPoint anywhere. You can walk around a venue, you can walk next to a pool. These are great for pools. Um, sometimes when we're doing balloon columns with a three foot on top, we might inflate the three foot um, in the back of the car when we get there so we can fit more into our vans. So uh, th this here is um, a Makita brand. You can Google it. There's a YouTube video. We talk a bit more about this. And there's different power modes. So holding the 260Q so that we don't lose our balloon. Why? Well, because we want to control where the, balloon, where the light sits in the balloon. So I'm holding this 260Q. There we go. Whatever size we're comfortable with. And just coming this way. See, I've still got my two 260s. Okay. And even if we want, we can turn that light source on, give it some color. Now, so once again, that light source needs to sit. You can probably see it. It needs to sit on the underside. So if this is going on top of a column or it's helium inflated, that light source is going straight up and it's a nice clean um, effect. So simply with the two 260Qs out, I will tie all of that in one and pull it through. Or conversely, if this was going to be rigged, hanging somewhere, then that's easily done. Let's have a look. So there we go. If I can just change the colors, so we have white, green, red, whatever. There's actually also a few, you can change the um, luminosity of the balloons. And there's some modes as well, like some flash and I don't really use these. Here we go. That mode, this mode. Whatever this mode is, changing colors, pretty cool, right? And for a few dollars, um, this effect is just absolutely amazing. It, you do need um, to make sure that the ambient light source at the venue is low. If this is a daytime or if it's uh, you know, an evening, but there's still a lot of natural light coming from outside, or the house lights are on and they're very bright, um, it just, it's just not worth it. I wouldn't recommend this. Let's get the light back on. Um, so you need to find that out first. And whenever we do classes, whenever we're, um, you know, some people with experience are talking about some of the events that they do, the most important thing I hear time and time again, and that I like to teach as an instructor, is always ask questions, questions, questions. Um, because you might not know if you're selling this type of balloon with that type of light at all until you find out that it's a neon party and it's going to be really late and the lights are dark and then boom, forget about what they're asking, now start suggesting products that you know are perfect for that um, climate and that, that type of event. Um, so very affordable. We've even used this in cloud busters and I'll show you that next. Now where lighting is fun in balloons, lighting in giant balloons is even more fun. <laughs> we use cloud busters a lot in our decor. Just like we said about lighting, I think it's really underutilized. These balloons can be from four feet, which is about uh, 1.2 meters, all the way to eight feet, which is a little over 2.5 meters. So in diameter, that is, okay? So just absolutely huge. So when they're at a, in, a, in a big event, um, especially giant ballrooms with high ceilings, a single huge cloud buster balloons rigged can be really effective. Now we've worked with lighting inside these and also lighting externally. And we're going to show you both. Now quite often with some of the larger scale events that we do, 
if they're going to be lit externally, a lighting company will come in and do that. But it's up to us as a balloon professional to sell the entire package. Okay, they want to see um, the, the vision of a giant illuminated light with a projected image or whatever it's going to be um, turning on and changing colors. That vision has to be sold. And it's probably not going to be the lighting guy because they want to sell more lights. Okay, It's up to you to sell balloons with that union of perhaps lights. So uh, with Cloudbusters, like before, I do have a video on YouTube um, talking about inflating it, but we'll go through some of the key elements again. Um, this is a four foot. Um, it's been inflated before, uh, so it's a little bit softer. Um, the colors changed a little. It's not as, as white as it once was, so forgive me. Um, but the first thing you're going to notice is that the necks of cloud buses are quite tight. Now, I, I have in the past got this inside here by holding it and getting somebody else to help. If you're by yourself, the best option to do is to cut the thick part of that neck in about half, maybe say cut 40% of it off. All right. So there you go. And then that'll make it a little easier to put in. But what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to tie a bit of nylon or, or rope or whatever you've got to this 260Q because I still might lose it. It's a big balloon. And the last thing I want to do is um, have that falling down and try and get it back out again. So I've just tied a little loop out of my 260Qs that we did similar to the three foot, but now with a loop. And I'm gonna tie my nylon, my fishing line, to the outside there. All right, so we're good to go with that. I've got some cable ties ready. That's what we're gonna be tying the, um, the neck of the balloon with. We're gonna be sealing it with some cable ties. And I've got my inflator ready. You wanna have all your bits ready to go, because the last thing, especially if you're working outside around a pool, we use these a lot in pools. They're a lot more resilient and strong. Um, the material can rub against surfaces without popping as much as some other fully inflated latex balloons. All right, so bear with me, it's a bit hard by yourself. <laughs> so pop it in, there we go. So I've got that here, ready to go. And let's inflate it. One little tip with inflating cloud buses as well is you, it might have a loud noise where it's that sort of like simple harmonic motion of it like flapping around. It's been quite noise and quite, quite a, an angry sound almost. So I put my thumb around here and it just sort of breaks up the way that the air flows into the balloon. Now, for the purpose of this video, <laughs> you're gonna lose me. That's about our four foot. Now the, the light, I can feel it. And now we get to that point and I can see already that it's on the, oh, how are you gonna see me here? <laughs> that it's just there. I can feel it on the edge of the underside of the balloon there. So I'm gonna pull that. We're going to twist that neck and if you can get a fold then that's even better like this but what I'm going to do twisting it get my cable tie so you notice I've got two cable ties for this reason bring that in and can I suggest before you tie it off always make sure it works so I can see some color there now all right, first cable tie. And if I can now twist it in, fold it on itself, second cable tie, that's actually what creates a really strong seal. So we want the latex or the cloudbuster material to be um, folded on itself. And here, I would never cut the cable tie because you're going to create a really sharp end there. So quite often you can get away with just sort of wrapping it around the underside of the neck of the balloon and then I, I use the material of the 260Q to sort of wrap around as well and just tie it in. You, often the top of the balloon 
will not be visible. Okay, so let's just have a look. Get that through there. <laughs> we'll turn some lights off. So that is a, there we go, you see that there? So that is just our regular supersized balloon light. We'll go some colors, we'll go white. You see here, quite often when I'm on jobs, I actually just walk around the room and shine up and um, within at least about a few meters distance, you can um, get that infrared signal to bounce back off. So here we go, here's a color changing mode. Pretty cool. So we, we actually did a, um, uh, a television ad for um, Tourism Australia and we had several, about 12, um, uh, five and a half foot cloud buster balloons with these super sized balloon lights. And to sell the pitch to the client, I just went in on, on site to their office, it was indoors, we turned all the lights off and I showed them this. And how could you not want to order 12 of these for a TV ad once you see this in place? Um, interestingly enough, we found that that size balloon, the red, wasn't vibrant enough. And I'll show you in the next part of this video what we did as a solution for that. So just while we have you, um, I will turn the house lights back on. Um, so we're going to turn this supersized balloon light off. And while we have this balloon inflated, as an example, I want to use our park hands. We're going to be showing you this next. These are our um, more professional grade lights that we rent. Um, these cost us, uh, I think it was about $250 each. They've got an amazing lithium ion battery inside and they charge and they, they go for about 12 hours or so. Um, but obviously a much more professional option to turn up. And let's just have a look at this light source. So markedly different, of course. Let's just compare it, get our super size light back on, turn this off. So you can see just the difference. Let's go a similar color. Let's see if we can get that happening. Where is, that color? Where is it? Maybe this, and we'll turn that back on. There it is. So of course, the larger lights are amazing. Um, and you can see the difference there. However, I don't think if you can't afford these or justify larger park hands, it doesn't rule you out of using lights as a solution to upsell your balloons. Um, another thing while, while we're looking at this here is the effect of external lighting versus internal lighting. Um, you can just see how the gradient and the shadowing has, has been applied. Hopefully you can see that as well as I can as the balloon shines externally. So they're cloud busters. So that there I've inflated to about 1.1, maybe 1.2 meters. So imagine a 2.4, 2.5 meter balloon that you've sold and rigged um, at the event of your next client. Stay tuned. We're gonna look at uh, LED strip lighting and some other more professional alternatives. Here we are with some LED strip lighting and LED rope lighting. So we're gonna amp things up a little bit to the next level. I do apologize if some of this might get a little bit confusing, but I think it's really important to know where you can go with a little bit more research. So I've been using LED strip lighting, uh, lighting and rope lighting for 20 years. In fact, I was using rope lighting back when it was high voltage and quite warm and a bit dangerous. And it's wonderful now that we can get our 12 volt um, safer uh, LED lights to work with. Um, so let's just sort of go through all of it. If you had seen the um, Qualitex uh, um, brochure for weddings, the cover of that, I was very um, graciously honored to have our photo of a cloud that we did um, maybe seven years ago now uh, placed on the cover of that um, magazine. Now that particular cloud was illuminated from within and it's something that I provided to my client as an after um, pitch, as, a, as just an, an extra value add by using very simple LED rope lighting in that case. 
Um, we've done lots of work with strip lighting that's woven inside either balloon organic garland or even um, framed letters and other applications which we'll talk about soon. So I just want to show you um, how, how it looks, how it works, um, some of the pros and cons and of course we'll, we'll turn the lights off and, and see how they respond to our organics here. Let's start with rope lighting. Now the reason why they call it rope lighting of course is because it, um, it's the thickness of a rope. Uh, it's Proof, like check the packaging, but most of the time it's designed as waterproof. Um, a lot more malleable, stronger than some of the, the thinner strip lighting. Um, I have found though that if you leave it outside for too long, it can sort of melt a little bit. In, in the Australian weather anyway, it can melt a little bit and, and uh, fog up um, the material of the plastic will, will just start to not be as clear. But that's fine, it shouldn't matter at all because the the lighting itself, the rope lighting is going to be hidden inside the balloons. So let's just plug it in. These come with a, um, often, a just regular power adapter that just plugs straight in. So probably the easiest out of all that I will show you to use. So plug it straight into a power point. And there we go. There will be a few um, modes depending on what you buy. So, you know, they're designed for Christmas, those kind of things. So of course we've got all our different modes. Let's just, for the purpose of this, leave it on on. And let's turn off our lights. So unlike the copper wire lighting, I, I want to have this hidden and I'll usually install it from behind the balloon garland um, or quite often we'll actually use um, quick links. So we've, got, we've talked about that before using quick links to create a cloud. So I will actually build the cloud and then install the whole thing behind the, um, the balloon quick link structure. So that's that there, super easy to work with. Um, get our lights. Now let's look at um, LED strip lighting. So you can find this again on, on eBay or, or um, Amazon. The hardware stores sell them as well. Some buy it with a, a power adapter and it's, it's click and off you go. Some of it is a bit more complicated and they're designed for um, maybe window dresses or, or cabinet makers to, as under cabinet lighting um, and it can get really complicated and we'll, we'll quickly look at that kind of stuff. So here we have um, uh, just, just a, a single, uh, I, think it's, I think this is bright white LED, so it's just simply one channel. It goes through and it just lights it all up as white. Um, this pack came with a remote and a controller. So if I were to plug this in Let's get it plugged in. Okay, so the, the mains power comes to my um, power inverter, which drops it back down to 12 volts. And if I were to plug that in just as is, it goes full bright LEDs. Now you can see the difference in the brightness there, of course. So to, depending on what brands you buy, um, generally speaking, the LED strip lighting will be brighter. But if I plug that out again and plug it back through the control mechanism here, now we have a few different things that we can do. So we can change the brightness. It's on a, on a mode right now. And we can just change it all around, different things. So depending on what we want, uh, this is quite cool. I like that one. Like a slow fade. We can change the speed. Here you go. That's why. Change the speed. we go. Okay, so let's just look how we how that looks when we thread it through our garland. This case is broken. <laughs> okay. Should be enough. We have it through. Let's turn off those lights again. So you can tell as well that you don't want the lights facing out the individual LEDs. If they face backwards, when you turn them around, then it, the whole thing looks a lot more hidden. There you go. So much brighter, of course, we've got our softer warm white 
rope lighting on my left, your right, depending. <laughs> and over here we have the bright white LEDs. So let's just sort of change the mode again. I'm looking for the soft fade. Why isn't that working? Let's turn these off. Here we go. Let's just leave it like that. So you can change the um, brightness, brightness up, brightness down, depending on what you're after. So very affordable, not many options, but um, I think a, a really good uh, proposition to use for maybe $20, where you illuminate from within um, any structure. Now these white LEDs, I would be happy to use them with other colors, maybe like light pink, light blues, lighter colors so the light will still transfer um, or transition through the balloons. Darker colors, reds, blues, um, it would be very difficult for this light source to be effective. If you want, if your client wants a red or a blue or something like this, I would certainly then step up to the RGB LEDs where the color of the light source itself is sending that color through the balloons. So let's look at that now. Turn up these back on and we can turn this off. Here. Okay, so that as well. All right, so in front of me now are uh, two types of RGB LED lighting. So this one here is a um, um, smart RGB in the sense that went for, there's a um, specific. Uh, um, like sequence or a specific number on every single LED. So it can control every single LED individually. Okay, so it's smart RGB. Whereas over here is just hardwired RGB. So there's all you can do is send X amount of voltage to each of the three colors. So you can transition from colors, but the whole thing moves as one. And I'll show you that difference. So we'll plug this in. And it has a music controller, so um, this here can activate by music itself, which is kind of cool. But if we were to change the mode or the pattern, now you can start to see where, uh, let's reduce the speed. So let's sort of plug this in. So you can see how this particular sequence, I love that it moves from one side of the LED to the other. So if you had a, a large organic installation or perhaps a, a quick link wall, anything like that where you had a lot of length to play with, you can see the movement, let's turn these lights off, that how it moves from one side of the strip to the next. So this is definitely the future of course. And you've probably seen some smart guys um, on Balloon Friends or similar pages showing how they can control the lights using much more um, comprehensive controllers where um, you can turn on individual LEDs at a whim. So that there is pretty damn cool. Now over here, um, we're, we'll just turn that off. Now this is the sort of stuff that I've, I've probably used the most over the time because I'm a bit of a nerd and I do like getting a little, a little complicated. Um, now this is where we buy our individual strip lighting and you can connect it in to create larger shapes and all kinds of things. In fact, I'll show you this. So here we have a RGB controller that's controlled by a remote control. And this particular um, clear PVC tubing, I drilled a hole and we ran our wiring up through here. And so this actually self-supported uh, a column. I think this was for, uh, last time I used it, it was a, um, whoop, a lantern. So the balloons were uh, woven as clear lantern that came up here. So just the light source was controlled in this one section. 
Okay, so you can start to think about how you can use LEDs in individual parts, perhaps a, um, uh, a witch's um, cauldron or you know, the lights of a, a sculpture. Um, they can be controlled by individual LED strip lights. Here's a, um, something else I've had lying around. We used this inside a five and a half foot cloud buster where it was just hardwired onto the red um, part of RGB. So in, inside the, the super sized balloon lights weren't strong enough and I, I had it tied at two points on the neck of that helium filled cloud buster and it acted like a, a filament almost inside the balloon. Um, so let's just look at something simply. So once again, these are designed for, um, often for, um, you know, AV installers where they'll come in and they might set up a light box and whatever else. So they can get expensive, but some of the stuff is also quite cheap depending on how intense you want to go. So let's plug this in over here. So this is a larger power converter, so it can take a lot more um, linear meters of strip lighting. I'm not going to talk about that yet because <laughs> that's just a bit intense, but it's a, a larger converter. If you start to get into this, I think you do need to do your research. All right, so we're there. Um, I bought a, a series of different sort of double adapters so you can easily spread it into different strands of lighting. So let's just see what that looks like. All right, so this here would be, I don't know, 10 meters. And if you look at this controller, I can just put my finger on it and change the colors. Uh, and I gotta tell you, you can change different modes and the intensity up, down. What's going on? There we go. And different modes, whatever it else. But customers love being able to pick their exact color palette that they wanna work with. Um, so back to our little double adapters, you simply just say we, we have an organic garland that spreads this way and that way, I'll have this junction at the base and then I'll plug in two different sections, just like that. And then we weave it through the organics. Let's have a quick look at that. Once again, trying for the LEDs to face in. That's, that's good enough, we can, you get the idea. There we go, so let's unplug this to, pretty cool, huh? So we get our client and, we, and they can go, well, look, let's, let's get back on our remote here. Let's go, ooh, no, we want a bit more purple, purple, there we go, let's go back to blue. Yep, that's the corporate color, blue, right there, Wh whatever it is. Pretty fun and using exactly the same balloon decor that you've already done a million times and now you've converted into something that has life and movement. Okay. Great. So I won't confuse you more with some of this stuff. I do appreciate it was a little over the top. Um, but one more thing to share with you. So please bear with me and hope you've enjoyed it so far. See you soon. We've mentioned already uh, what we call a parkan, which these guys are. Um, I just wanted to lastly, before we move on to the next part, is to show the comparison between these and the LED strip lighting that we just looked at before. Of all the years that I've been working with balloons and lights, I find myself moving more and more into just using parkans. It's just so much easier. The battery technology is fantastic. This is fully charged. It's you know, it'll, you just set and forget. They're expensive, of course, but once you pay for it, then you'll, you can get that money back pretty quickly. Um, so I just wanted to show the comparison. With, with the LED lights, you would have noticed all those individual light sources, those dots of LED can be visible through organics um, and some of the other things that we do. Uh, but with a larger light source, I've seen it when the jobs that we do when a professional lighting company will come in and do the lighting part and you just see they've got that big lighting bar or individual lights just shining up. It's so, they just put it in, bam, and the quality is so different. Um, and what I love about it is, is that the light will, as we said before, where it, it hits a, a balloon and it's strongest where it first hits and then it slowly dissipates 
as the balloon actually, a white balloon will absorb the color and it'll radiate it through and it'll dissipate through those layers of balloons, which to me is a really striking effect that you can't get, or it's, it's more difficult to get through LED strip lighting. Um, so just the last thing here, what we'll do is we'll just show um, what it looks like with perhaps two different uh, park hands on this one design. So literally just place one like so behind it and we'll place another at a different angle with a subtly different color. And look at that. Well, within seconds, you know, you've got a different way here perhaps if I bring it around the front. Within seconds, you've turned your installation into something completely different. And I love this two-tone colors as well, how um, you know, these balloons absorb and the two colors meet in the one space. So it's something to think about. Of course, it's not for everybody, um, but, but Park Hands, they're called P-A-R-C-A-N. Um, um, you can find them everywhere, battery operated. And uh, let's just place that back in here, shiny up. To me, this is probably where I'm going with lights and my decor. Now let's continue on the theme of balloons and lighting, but let's use it in a different way. So something we do all the time is um, simple deco bubbles with LED copper wire um, strands. Now I'm sure everybody's seen it on the markets where uh, people sell balloons, like bubble balloons, that have the copper wire on the outside. To me that's a bit cheap, everybody's seen that kind of product. What I like to do is get the copper wire inside the balloon, um, creates a much more premium feel and we can do some other fun things with how we theme our balloons. So here we have just the um, Halloween spiderweb uh, 24 inch deco bubble. I've got some red uh, shimmer curtain. This actually um, I've had lying around from a, from a job that we've done. Uh, always good to keep because we make tassels out of these shimmer curtains. They're also called door curtains. They're usually sold as a um, 90 centimeter um, uh, width that obviously goes in between a door jam. So let's pop that over there. Um, and then we're going to have our uh, copper wire LED strand. This here I think is a three meter length from memory. Three meters is important. Any less than that I wouldn't use it for this product. Um, quite often with the double battery ones you can get them in 1.5 meters. It's just not enough. So as we spoke about earlier, with the battery pack, you can use that to create a, uh, a weight, make the battery pack the weight itself. So we'll go through all of those processes. But with the weight, we have the first section of um, LED strand that gets to the underside of the balloon and the rest will be fed inside the deco bubble. All right, so let's open her up. that down there. Now normally what we do is we get a, um, uh, in the shop we've got a little air pump, so we'll pump a bit of air in here to open it up. And I don't have any air on me right now, so we're just going to use a little bit of helium. I know what you're all thinking. Okay, it is a waste of helium, but we're just doing one, just to open it up a little bit. Okay. Now, our copper wire, I'm thinking about the underside, how tall it's going to be. Is it going to be on the ground or off a table? In this case, we're going to have a table height. So that's about where we'll finish. And the rest of it is there. Okay, so I've kept that underside and I've got my finger here on the top, which has made a, a perfect middle. So I've halved the length required. And I'm just going to feed it from that halved point into the deco bubble. So that's a good little tip because we're feeding twice the length of copper wire at the same time. And we know when to stop when we're at the tip of that uh, where we started. So once again, just thinking about our height. All right, so now inside here, I wanna, that bend where I first halved it, I wanna just open that there. Okay, so it's nice. We don't have any really hard um, angles inside. All right, so now we get our helium.
This little tip as well, I really like to have it on as I work, just to make sure there's nothing wrong. All right, as with all deco bubbles, um, you stop just when the um, outside of the scenes no longer has any really significant creases. Um, we would have mentioned this before, in Australia there's a big heat differential between inside and outside. So I usually leave a little bit of a crease on the seams. Now, before we tie it, I wanna make sure that I'm not holding a part of the actual LED bulb itself, the thick part, okay? I wanna make sure that I'm tying a knot in between two of the LED bulbs, which is where I am now. So I'm gonna pinch it really tight, twist, 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 and use a 260Q, or in this case, I like the clear elastic tape that I've spoken about before. Um, you can find tape like that on uh, Amazon, uh, eBay, or in Australia, uh, we get it from a floristry supplier. It's called Elastic Bouquet Tying Tape. So obviously clear works perfectly for this design. So wrap that a few times, tie a knot. And what I always do, just to be sure, and I fold it again and wrap around the other way. And tie another knot. It's all about um, lots of contact of the plastic and the elastic, making a really nice tight seal. All right, I'm gonna leave that there. That being the excess of my um, bokeh tying tape. Put that over here, over there. Okay, so now for our tassel. Just gonna grab some of the excess and make sure we have the full end. Oh. Okay, so let's say this is the part that we want to use. It's already a bit frayed because we've used this before. Um, grab some more of my tape. And at the point where to create our tassel, I'm just going to tie this on first. So it's very important, don't cut the shimmer curtain yet. Make sure you tie this on first because you're going to make a real mess otherwise. Okay and then cut it above the line. All right, so super easy metallic tassel that we've just made. I'm gonna tie that on. I actually like to work with it upside down against the bench, just so I have a bit more control. Now make sure your knots are underneath the original knot that you tied, or I can actually tie it off a part of the uh, clear tape from our original knot, and that just stops the tassel from sliding. Okay, trim it all down. <laughs> Be careful not to cut the copper wire, I've done that before. Okay, we have a cute little red tassel and we can finish off this design with um, either wrapping it in black fabric, like so, or we could get some red, or in this case, silver, just very simple, silver foil. And we could use, um, I'll show you what I'm gonna do here just to keep it all in that metallic-y kind of cool theme. I'll tie it with my clear tape. And then we can get a, just a small cut here. Just the smallest amount and we could use satin ribbon or we could even use a bit more of the same material just to continue that tone, that accent of red.
Ja. All right. So you can sometimes feel for the switch. Where is it? I didn't make it loose enough. So that's a bit of a tricky one. Um, you can sometimes feel for the switch to turn it on and off. But in this case, let's just show you what it looks like with our lights off. That's pretty cute. So there we have a spooky table centerpiece that didn't take long, didn't cost much, but looks absolutely beautiful. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. You guys have a wonderful day with the convention and uh, I can't wait to tune in and see what everybody else has to show us. Once again, Chris Adamo from the Balloon Crew, Sydney, Australia and BalloonPro.co signing off. Everybody. Hola a todos, ¿qué tal estáis? <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me to this convention. Muchas gracias por invitarme a la convención. Estoy muy contenta de estar aquí. I'm very, very pleased to be here with you all. And I wanted to let you know a bit more about me. My name is Marta Fernández Aneas. Quería deciros un poco de quién soy yo y qué hago. Me llamo Marta Fernández Aneas. Mi negocio se llama Mar Balloons. Y me habréis visto en los chats traduciendo. <laughs> my, my business name is Mar Balloons, and you may have seen me there on the chat translating. Um, I started my business less than two years ago, and I've been doing different things. And with the situation that has happened to all of us, I had to restart everything. I started as an entertainer and now I'm doing more like a deco twisting design, some gifts and other things that I was not including at the very beginning when I started my business. Uh, yo empecé mi negocio menos de dos años hace que yo lo empecé y empecé como entretenedora en fiestas para niños, haciendo mis globos, entreteniendo con juegos y con todo lo que ha pasado pues tuve que cambiar un poco el sentido del negocio y, y lo que yo hacía. Ahora hago decoraciones con globoflexia, decoraciones clásicas, hago regalos y he cambiado un poco lo que estaba haciendo. He incluido más cosas, espero volver a hacer fiestas pronto también. Y bueno, estoy aquí porque quiero, quiero explicaros lo que yo hago o lo que yo empecé haciendo para conseguir clientes y ventas al principio. Uh, so I want to explain to you what I started doing at the beginning to get my sales and to get my customers. I think it's very consistent, it's a fast way, it's a cost-effective way um, and I think it will help you all. Whether you are starting at the moment or when you are relocating or you just want to know a different technique, this will be helpful for you. Y si acabas de empezar el negocio de los globos o os habéis cambiado de ciudad, cambiáis el negocio, esta técnica os va a servir. Simplemente si queréis encontrar otra forma también de hacer más ventas y encontrar más clientes. So, this class is about leverage your customer hand when you join, when you join efforts, when you create the connection with local businesses, when you try to um, increase that um, that benefit that is for both of you, is a win-win approach, it is that focusing on what we can do for the customer together and that will bring that success back to each business separately. Um, and that is especially in these times when you need to focus on those little you know, the small businesses, the local businesses, that we can do so much to bring joy to people and 
ultimately to be successful in business. El poder trabajar con negocios locales, negocios pequeños, que podéis ayudaros mutuamente. El beneficio mutuo es la clave de esta técnica y, y es lo que más le va a llegar al cliente. Es, eh, es ese trabajar con lo que tienes alrededor, con esos negocios que están ahí para, para el cliente, que personalizan, que, que intentan, que, que escuchan más que las grandes empresas. So basically as well, it is important to know that small businesses listen more than the big businesses. Um, it has happened to me because they are willing to offer what the customer wants. They don't have a specific, not too specific, they're not too specific about it, where everything should look like and they're not like that factory like that they, everything has to look the same so that is a bit of um, input as well that you would need to, to know about this technique um, y se basa principalmente en que estos pequeños negocios que tú vas a estar um, trabajando con los que tú vas a estar trabajando van a vender tu um, producto para ti es decir que, que estos negocios van a usar tu producto lo van a vender a sus clientes. Um, so we're going to be working with different elements um, in order to achieve this. Well, so I'm going to go through that together um, now. Um, so hay algunos elementos que tenemos que considerar para que esta técnica funcione. Vamos a empezar a hablar de estos elementos ahora. So basically the, the potential customer um, has to be the same for you and for that business. And before you start saying, I'm going to steal their customers, so they are my customers, there's no my customer, their customers here. This is not about that. This is about, let's get the customer a better product if we combine both. What I'm going to be creating is some um, products for that business to enhance their own products. Whether this is a cake, a bakery that sells cakes, whether this is a florist, whether this is a gift shop, whatever the, whatever the, you know, the, whether this is like a play center for the children to play in that center, whatever the other business is about has to complement what you do. Basically your product will be enhancing their products. So if it's something that is not related, uh, maybe it's not that business that you need to approach, you need to write a list of the, those um, um, local businesses that you want to work with because you like their product, because you like what they do, because you don't mind your name associated to that other business. And you need to find those businesses that are having sort of gaps, missing parts, something you know that with your product you can improve theirs. It's this um, cake that you can put a cake topper on top that is going to be completely different to what they're offering already. Um, it may be the, the florist only of the flowers and you could say I could create these amazing things that you can go and put on top of the flowers and then you can sell to kids as well now because you can have you know teenagers or, or you can have these other products like this one and, and have these different things that you can um, use to enhance their own product so that's what you need to look for and then write a list of those businesses Vamos a intentar escribir una lista de esos negocios locales pequeños que tienen la posibilidad de poder um, mejorar su producto con el tuyo. Um, y hablamos de esto en el sentido de que son estos negocios con los que tú quieres trabajar, estos negocios con los que a ti te gusta su producto, es principal, si te gusta lo que hacen, a ti no te va a importar que se te mencione en, en su negocio, que la gente hable de ese negocio y se acuerde de ti. Um, no quieres que se acuerde de ti porque el negocio es un negocio que a ti no te gusta, pero al final vende, ¿no? Porque eso al final del día tú vas a tener que hablar bien de este otro negocio y si no te gusta no vas a, a ponerle el corazón, ¿no? Tienes que encontrar esos negocios que además tengan algo que les falte. Pues si es una... una um, tienda de repostería que venden tartas, pues sabes que le puedes poner un, una parte de globos en la parte alta de la tarta para decorarla, o si venden flores y le pones un globo encima, o simplemente algo así, um, o una decoración más infantil porque a veces quieres 
que, que a lo mejor ellos sí tienen público, algo un público más infantil y esto les va a ayudar más a vender este producto que es como más para adultos. Entonces busca lo que les falta, busca cómo tu producto va a mejorar el suyo, la presentación, si es una tienda de regalos, esos regalos que van en un paquete cuadrado, ¿por qué no le ponen un globo encima? Y ahí va a cambiar completamente cómo el cliente le va a entregar este paquete de regalo a su, a su hijo con un globo súper bonito encima cambia completamente la percepción ¿no? de lo que entonces ellos van a poder añadir valor a su producto con tu producto y eso es lo que buscamos añadir valor el valor añadido que ellos pueden incrementar el precio solo por esto y tú vas a cobrar lo que tú quieres cobrar para tu producto ¿no? so they're going to be able to increase the value on their product and charge more for it, get better reviews because your product will enhance their product, will make it better, sells better and at the end of the day you will get the money that you are asking for your product and they will charge whatever they think they can charge for that but you are making them increase the value of the product. Um, el siguiente es el va los productos, no hemos hablado de, de los productos y principalmente es importante al igual que cuando tú haces un currículum que cuando vas a, a buscar un trabajo no, no llegas y, y te entregas un currículum de 50 cursos que has hecho de mecánica, de, de cómo coser, de, de yo no sé, de, de animar en fiestas, un curso de psicología, un curso de, de alimentos y todo ahí en el currículum y se lo entregas a aquel centro de educación infantil que dice ¿y yo para qué quiero esto? Y el igual para estos negocios, tú necesitas crear productos específicos para cada negocio. Productos que crees que van a funcionar para ese negocio. Este negocio es una organizadora de eventos, pues no le lleves a lo mejor una cosa así pequeñita. Busca en unas fotos de arcos para adornar las salas. Eh, busca columnas, busca cosas clásicas y modernas, mezcla lo que crees que este organizador de eventos necesita y para eso en cada uno de los negocios tú vas a personalizar qué tipo de producto les quieres ofrecer. You need to tailor the kind of products, we're going to talk about products now, we're going to tailor the kind of product you want to offer to the businesses. You don't want to come up with a product that it's just a generic product that you can offer a hundred businesses, a local businesses. Um, as you know, the same you would do for when you want to go and find a job and you write your curriculum, your CV, you don't want to put hundred courses there that are not related. Basically you say, this is what I can do, this is how I can improve your business. If it's a event planner, just go with a big arch, go with classic decor, maybe some other, see what they like, see what they are doing already, research that business and see what they can utilize, what products you can tell them that are good for them and they will make more sales um, with those products. At the end of the day, it is about helping them and the better you can help them, the better you're going to get the benefit from them. Si ellos tienen que percibir que estamos ahí para ayudarles, para que empiece esa conversación, tienen que, tienen que ver que en realidad no estás ahí para competir, que estás ahí porque quieres ayudarles y esto va a ayudarte también a ti y es un beneficio mutuo y realmente, realmente es esto, esta es la, la técnica. So this is really the technique. You cannot help yourself using their resources if you're not there to help them either. Um, so you need to have both ways and they need to see that. That's the way to start the conversation, otherwise they would not listen to you. Um, and absolutely, that's absolutely key. This is really what you're doing. You're helping them, so that helps you too. Um, una parte importante, la siguiente parte importante es, about, es sobre este acuerdo que vas a llegar. ¿no? Este acuerdo al que, que llegas con esta empresa es un acuerdo en el que tú trabajas con ellos porque vas a hacer cosas para ellos que son específicas a su negocio. No significa que es exclusivo, tú puedes vender lo mismo para tres negocios más, tú o, o cinco, o todo el mundo puede vender lo mismo. Ellos no están pagando exclusividad, a no ser que la paguen, en realidad es simplemente lo, te voy a ayudar de esta manera. ¿no? Um, y es te puedo ofrecer y se, lo, y se lo vas a ofrecer a otra gente, a, a, a todos los negocios a los que tú quieras ofrecerle esos productos. Um, 
pero es importante que también entiendas que tú no trabajas para ellos, tú eres tu propio negocio, tú tienes que saber lo que tú quieres conseguir y lo que tú quieres dar, cómo vas a ayudarles, no es voy allí y trabajo para ti, eso no es nada, eso no es lo que tenéis que enfocaros, lo que tenéis que enfocaros es yo voy a trabajar contigo porque me va a beneficiar y esto es lo que yo te ofrezco y tenéis que tenerlo claro para empezar la negociación, cuando tenéis las cosas claras ellos escuchan. Es importante que puesto que es tu producto que haya una manera en la que ese producto se identifique contigo, no con esa tienda. Entonces, imaginaros que es, una, um, que es un ramo de flores y le van a poner tu globo encima y se lo van a entregar al cliente y el cliente se lo va a entregar a su mami porque es el día de las madres. Um, ese cliente, cuando esa madre cuando recibe ese ramo de rosas y ve tu globo y dice, madre mía, las rosas son preciosas y el globo lo es más. Y yo estoy maravillada, qué bonito queda todo. Tú quieres que esa persona diga, pues tengo un cumpleaños de mi sobrino eh, la semana que viene o en tres meses y este globo me ha fascinado tanto que quiero que, que me hagan este globo. Pero esta tienda vende flores. ¿Este globo de dónde es? Y necesitas entonces que... tu logo, tu página web, tu correo electrónico, tu nombre, lo que sea. La manera en que tú quieres que el cliente te contrate o te, te busque tiene que estar en ese globo, en cada uno de los elementos que tú le das a esta tienda para que venda eh, y la ponga con sus productos, tiene que estar tu logo, tu nombre, tu teléfono, tu dirección de, de correo electrónico. Porque la, el objetivo principal de esta técnica es que sus clientes te conozcan a ti y eso es básico, eso es la manera en que esto funciona. Uh, this is very important to remember that you, you are working with them but do, you do not work for them. This is you, you need to be sure of what you want to tell them. When you are going to start talking to the business, you need to be sure about what you want from that relationship. You need to know how much you want to charge, you need to know what the terms are on that agreement and you are going to be flexible because you're working with different businesses and they work differently. You want to show them I'm willing to work with you but this is what I need for this to work. Um, and one of the key um, elements of this is that if you imagine selling a bunch of flowers, um, well you know they're selling them, but the business is about flowers and they sell flowers to the customers and they're going to this day deciding to include something like this, just something different to enhance their products and have a way to put a message on it that is a different way and that's what they're getting from you for example. You want to be able to get something from this which is if the customer buys those flowers with your balloons on top and go to their mom because it's Mother's Day and they're going to get that. The mother is going to be like, wow, that's amazing flowers here. Yeah, I love it so much and look at how amazing this balloon is. It's so cute. It's so beautiful. I'm so, so amazed. And when they see that, you want that mom to be able to see that if that balloon is not from the same shop, but they have included it within. And the way to get that is by putting your logo on it. You, be, you want that customer getting the flowers and the balloons and saying, I have a birthday soon and I want balloons and I know that person can get balloons for me. So I'm going to reach to this person and ask them if they do balloons for birthdays or if they do balloons or what kind of thing they can do for my next anniversary and, and just find out. Um, this is important for you to add your logo to the product that you are giving to that. That has to be part of the agreement and that has to be talked about. That logo, uh, it could be a telephone number, your name with a telephone number, it could be an email address, it could be a website, it could be social media, it could be anything that you want to put that the way you want the customer, the ultimate customer to reach you. Because the main aim, sorry, the main aim of this um, technique is for the customer to be able to know you so their customers will know you by doing this y así lo importante es que, que el cliente te conozca um, hay una eh, por ejemplo puede ser simplemente que, que tengáis una pegatina aquí con el nombre de vuestro um, 
el correo electrónico, las redes sociales, o simplemente si le ponéis un ribbon así, un curly, y le ponéis aquí las, la dirección, um, y, y simplemente con esto el cliente lo va a ver, va a decir, uy, ¿esto qué es? Ah, pues el, el globo viene de esta otra empresa. So that's the way to know, no? This is like a sticker on this side, or you could put it on a curly ribbon, or any other ways you have to do that. Um, that's a good way to do that, and the customer will see that, and the customer will start seeing um, this is the person who made the balloons, I'm going to contact them for the next birthday. Um, yo recomiendo que cua cada vez que hagáis una venta, lo pongáis en vuestras redes sociales. No solamente ellos te promocionan, tú le promocionas a ellos. When you see that they are happy for them, they are happy to do that for you and put the, your logo and so the customer can reach you, you want to show them that you're happy to do the same for them. And I think, I think it's a really good idea that I do is to post, it doesn't got to be every time, but you know, every time you can, about when they make a sale and they are they order for you, from you, you just um, take a photo and say, oh, look at an amazing thing I've done for this business, that they are selling these amazing roses and I have, now they have my toppers with them. I'm so happy to work with local businesses. Customers love that you work with local businesses, that you help each other, that they can reach to one, one business and they have um, your display of, of balloons over there and they can combine things instead of then having to go to individual shops and buying every single thing differently and um, if you have um, that business has a physical shop it is a good idea to give them sometimes some what the, at the beginning at least some samples for them to display in the shop and make sure you use good quality material that last like Qualatex, you make sure you use really good quality materials. You don't want something to be displayed that goes bad within a couple of hours. And I highly recommend High Float because you want when the customer after three, four days, they get to give it to the people that was intended for. You don't want the balloon to look bad. So I have had balloons with High Float for six weeks looking absolutely mint condition. So I highly recommend those two. Um, just make sure that you do bring that value, that extra value that doesn't cost much, cost much money. And también es importante que si esa tienda tiene un escaparate eh, o es física, una tienda física donde la gente puede ir, que tengan las muestras, que tengan algunas muestras, tal vez al principio o de vez en cuando, eh, sobre todo si es el día de pago que la gente va y compra más. Y es importante que uséis para, para los globos que deis a estas empresas, globos de calidad. Globos colates, yo siempre confío en ellos, son, son de calidad. No quieres que el globo se vea, se vea mal después de unas horas de estar ya allí expuestos en el escaparate. And yo siempre uso High Float, también yo no puedo recomendarlo más porque la verdad es que es, es algo que cambia completamente cómo luce el globo. He tenido globos de seis semanas luciendo como el primer día que los hice. Y bueno, si el cliente va a comprar de esta tienda, entre que tú lo haces, se lo llevas a la tienda, la tienda lo expone, el cliente lo compra, luego se lo da a su madre para el Día de las Madres. Cuando llega allí, después de seis días o cuatro días, el club no está igual. Y con el high flow dura muchísimo y tener materiales de calidad, ¿no? Que, que se exploten en cualquier momento, que, que además tenga la confianza de que sabes que lo que ofreces es bueno, porque tu nombre va asociado con ello. Y just make sure that anything that you offer is good because your name is going to be associated with it and the main thing is that just make sure that you bring the joy that you you leave that sparkle wherever you are <laughs> and that they can see that you are happy doing what you do and you want to make people happy with, with what you do too y que donde quiera que vayáis también esparzáis esa magia de los globos que lo paséis bien que, que este amor a los globos se transmite y que, y que van a estar encantados cuando hacéis las cosas de una manera positiva y para crecer mutuamente, para ayudaros, es cuando la magia aparece. Muchísimas gracias por atender a esta clase. Si tenéis dudas, os habré estado contestando en el chat, pero si tenéis más dudas, siempre podéis um, encontrarme en las redes sociales con el nombre de Mar Balloons Bristol y estaré encantada de contestaros vuestras dudas. If you have any other questions or any requests and, and you haven't had any chance on the chat, you can always reach me on my social media pages with at Bristol and I will be able to help you. I will be happy to help you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs>
Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, no sé a qué hora nos estés mirando. Bueno, espero que te estés disfrutando de esta super convención que Qualatex nos ofrece completamente gratuita. Yo recuerdo aún la convención del año pasado y realmente estaba pegada a la pantalla de mi teléfono, bien pendiente de las clases, de los instructores, de las técnicas, de todo lo que ellos estaban impartiendo y espero que tú lo estés disfrutando de esta manera. Permíteme presentarme, mi nombre es Leticia Lorza, soy de Dicos Balloons y estamos ubicados en la ciudad de Nueva York. Bueno, espero que el día de hoy puedas disfrutar de esta columna que vamos a elaborar. Bueno, colocamos nuestro primer cuarteto, recuerda, es el globo de 11 pulgadas calibrado a 9. El segundo cuarteto es calibrado a 7. Vamos a utilizar globos 260. Ya sea que lo simples con tu bomba manual o con la máquina eléctrica. Vamos a hacer unos... Voy a unir estas dos partes. ¿Ok? Ahora vamos a utilizar un globo de Geo, Geo Blossom. Lo vamos a inflar con nuestra bomba manual. Inflamos primero la parte superior y de último inflamos la parte inferior. Esta la vamos a colocar en esta parte. Con el excedente de boquilla tiramos sobre esta pieza. No necesitamos amarrar. El globo es muy bondadoso y nos puede ayudar a sostenerlo de esta manera. Vamos a hacer unos sin el geobloso y otros con el geobloso. Vamos a colocarlos en la columna. Y así hasta terminar nuestra columna. He creado eh, unos terciarios eh, de diferentes medidas. Yo estoy utilizando el Queen Standard. Y lo voy a pasar por la parte de abajo. Hacemos que el tubo llegue hasta el centro. Dos, dos piezas y así va a quedar ya firme nuestra base. Para nuestra siguiente parte vamos a estar utilizando un globo 260 en color rose, un globo 5 pulgadas Woodbury, un super agate en color um, for, um, pink violet. Y un globo 260 en Spring Lila. Bueno, vamos a empezar por inflar nuestro globo. Lo vamos a preinflar en su totalidad. Lo inflamos y sacamos el aire. Con una varita, un stick, introducimos el 5 pulgadas y inflamos a cuatro bombazos. Y amarramos, librando la boquilla. Cortamos el excedente. Y inflamos nuestro globo super agre. Ahora 
ahora apoyándonos con nuestro stick vamos a introducir el globo rosa. Introducimos. Agregamos un poco más de aire al super agate. Para, esto es para que el globo 260 pueda expandirse bien por dentro. Okay. Ahora vamos a inflar con la boquilla del 260. Okay. Colocamos la boquilla. Okay. Y vamos a inflar a seis bombazos. Y vamos a jalar la boquilla. Y amarrar. Vamos a cortar esta este excedente y esto lo vamos a reservar Y se nos va a formar esto. Esto lo vamos a llevar hacia arriba. crear este tipo de pedal. Esto es lo que queremos. Esto lo vamos a reservar. Y así vamos a hacer cinco piezas. ¿Sí? Y nos va a quedar así. Ahora nuestros pétalos, estos, los vamos a ir colocando. Vamos a jalar el cuello y lo vamos a introducir por una de las partes lo sujetamos y esto lo vamos a dejar aquí y así hemos terminado nuestros pétalos los hemos pegado en cada, en cada punto en cada unión hemos utilizado el tape doble capa y así es como nos queda en nuestro diseño vamos a utilizar dos una más pequeña y una más grande. ¿No? Vamos a elaborar las flores. En este caso voy a estar usando de un dark blue, un periwinkle y un pale blue. Entonces vamos a empezar por inflar el primero. Lo vamos a inflar a cuatro bombazos. En realidad no importa porque no vamos a utilizar todo el globo. Recorremos el aire. Amarramos y ahora vamos a crear un, aní, un, un aro de burbujas a dos dedos. Dos dedos, vamos a crear siete burbujas. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Y vamos a unir nuestra boquilla, la vamos a unir aquí y vamos a amarrar. Amarramos, recorremos el aire 
vamos a hacer una burbuja pequeñita de un solo dedo aproximadamente giramos es una burbuja pequeñita y aquí vamos a hacer nuevamente seis burbujas igual de dos dedos aproximadamente cuatro, cinco, uno más, seis. Y unimos en esta burbuja. Y sacamos nuestro excedente de aire. Ahora vamos a continuar con el siguiente color. Lo vamos a inflar igual a cuatro bombazos. Dos, tres, cuatro. Recorremos el aire y amarramos. Y en, en el anterior, en la última, en el último aro hicimos cinco. En este caso vamos a empezar nuevamente con cinco y después a cuatro. Entonces, dos dedos. Nuevamente, dos dedos. Dos dedos, dos dedos, y hicimos cinco y amarramos nuevamente. Recorremos el aire. Y ahora lo vamos a hacer de cuatro. Vamos a hacer el primero que es pequeño de una burbu una burbujita. Uno. Y ahí continuamos haciendo los cuatro de dos dedos. Uno. Dos. Tres. Unimos a esta primera parte. Y aquí liberamos el aire excedente. Vamos a amarrar vamos a la primera parte, la segunda parte. Y de último vamos a inflar nuestro Pale Blue. A tres bombazos, sacamos un poco de aire, amarramos y vamos a empezar con este último. A cuatro, cuatro burbujas, dos, dos dedos. la parte final de nuestra flor, so vamos a crear tres burbujas, tres burbujas, una, dos, tres. Recorremos el aire, que nuestro globo esté suave, vamos a hacer una, dos, y tres. Y ahora vamos a pasar este hacia acá. Para crear esto. Y este lo vamos a hacer para crear un pellizco. Así. Y vamos a pasar por aquí. Vamos a regresar nuestro. Hacia el medio. Vamos a recorrer el aire. Y vamos a hacer otra burbuja más. La vamos a pasar por el medio. Ahora de este lado vamos a hacer la siguiente. Y vamos a bajar hasta acá. Vamos 
tenemos nuestro aire para que tengamos un poco de flexibilidad. Dejamos por aquí. Podemos a, a, en este momento sacar el excedente de aire, ya no vamos a utilizarlo. Y cerramos. Y cortamos nuestro excedente. Ahora con un globo 160 en color Spring Ring vamos a inflar casi en su totalidad. sacar un poco del excedente de aire vamos a, a amarrar y ahora vamos a amarrar de este aire y ahora vamos a introducir este primero de cuatro burbujas vamos a introducir el de cinco burbujas y vamos a recorrer hasta el cuatro. y nuevamente aquí vamos a introducir el de cuatro el de 6 y el de 7 para que nos quede esto vamos a jalar con fuerza ahorita vamos a eliminar nuestras nuestros precedentes y aquí vamos a torcer y vamos a hacer 3 o cuatro petalitos nuestra florecita ok y así vamos a agregarle a nuestro diseño La siguiente flor vamos a utilizar el globo 160 en color Wayberry y vamos a utilizar el 160 igual en color Spring Green y vamos a hacer 21 burbujas y así tenemos 21 burbujas vamos a unir la boquilla con la última amarramos y eliminamos nuestro excedente vamos a dejar una y vamos a unir dos unimos estas dos tiramos dejamos una y unimos las siguientes dos dejamos una y unimos las siguientes y nos va a quedar esto ok ahora vamos a inflar dos globos aproximadamente la mitad del globo vamos a empezar en cualquiera de las burbujas vamos a amarrar esta vamos a girar varias veces y vamos a pasar esta dejamos una libre y amarramos aquí hacemos Cuatro dedos aproximadamente. Dejamos una y amarramos en el siguiente. Nuevamente dejamos una y amarramos en el siguiente. Siempre no se olviden de recorrer su aire para quitarle la tensión al globo. Dejamos una y amarramos en el siguiente.
Este, ¿no? Este sí. Este no, este sí. Y ahora aquí vamos a terminar. Nuestra boca. Por favor, cuando practiques esta rosa, etiquétame para saber que de algo te sirvió el que te hemos compartido esta técnica. Y aquí acomodamos que todas nuestras burbujitas estén hacia arriba. Y así es como se mira por la parte de atrás. Y así es como se mira por la parte de enfrente. Siguiente flor. Vamos a utilizar el eh, orange, el color naranja, en 1.60. Y igualmente para el tallo vamos a utilizar el 1.60. Nuestro 1.60. En su totalidad vamos a dejarle aproximadamente unos dos de, o un dedito sin inflar solamente para poder amarrarlo. Amarramos. Vamos a necesitar dos. ¿no? Ahora vamos a partir a la mitad. Vamos a medir y lo vamos a dividir en tres partes iguales. Nuevamente, serían tres partes iguales. Entonces, voy a torcer aquí y voy a torcer aquí. Y voy a unir estas tres. Y ahora voy a unir con este de acá. De tal forma que me quede en esta posición para poder crear una flor como esta. Vamos a col colocar nuestras flores en nuestra columna. Para eso vamos a utilizar los geoglossa para colocar nuestras flores. Para nuestra parte superior vamos a utilizar esta hada de 14 pulgadas, pero vamos a ponerle un pedacito de tape en la parte superior. Entonces vamos a introducir nuestra hada con cuidado, acercándome lo más que se pueda hacia la parte de, del cuerpo de, de la hada. Voy a sellar, simplemente trato de mantener plano sello, voy a remover este, este excedente, vamos a pegar un pedacito de tape doble capa que vamos a utilizar para pegarla y no tengamos esa parte eh, extra, introducimos con cuidado, ahora está aquí y lo mismo con cuidado vamos a remover el tape vamos a jalar de esta forma y vamos a pegar aquí y vamos a a ponerle confeti de color dorado ya introducimos todo el confeti nuestra hada recuerden que le pegamos el tape el, el tape lo vamos a pegar en esta parte de la boquilla porque es ahí donde Vamos a, a posicionar, entonces vamos a inflar nuestra burbuja con cuidado. Con la misma técnica que hicimos la flor anterior, hicimos esta de color amarillo y vamos a colocar nuestra burbuja en esta parte. Con los excedentes... Voy a pasar por el medio para poder amarrar. ¿Okay? 
y nos va a quedar de esta forma. Para el tallo de nuestra flor, de esta, vamos a utilizar los globos 350 y vamos a introducir uno dentro del otro. Esto lo voy a hacer porque al tener dos globos voy a provocar más firmeza en el, en el globo. Y eso me va a ayudar a poder eh, tener mayor estabilidad. Ahora voy a unir la boquilla a esta parte de la flor. Colocamos nuestras habas. Bueno, y así es como hemos terminado esta columna. Eh, con técnicas bien sencillas puedes crear un mundo mágico. Y bueno, espero que alguna de estas técnicas las puedas implementar. Bueno, es un placer haber estado este tiempo con ustedes. Sigan disfrutando de esta hermosa convención nuevamente, otorgado por Qualatex, una convención completamente gratuita. Disfrútala al máximo, toma notas y nos vemos en un siguiente capítulo con Qualatex. Hello everybody, Dr. Bob here from the UK, or to be precise, South Wales. Um, thank you boys, and thank you Qualitex and all your team for putting on this amazing event again. The first one was fantastic, this one's going to be absolutely amazing. But with all the skills and all the different instructors that we got, the expertise, We're going to try and inspire everyone out there as we inspire each other. So uh, it's all about positivity, especially in these bad times that we have at the moment. It's being strong, moving forward and making this industry absolutely amazing and the best ever. So that being said, I'll get on with this with the session. And this session is all about caricatures, uh, how to create a caricature from a picture, uh, breaking down a, a design, because I always get asked, how, how would you do it? How would you do it this? Well, it's all in the head. I look at a picture and I can break it down into its certain elements. But you need to know all your different techniques. Very important. Because once you establish all the techniques and you know your pinch twist and everything else, which I'll talk about later on, is that The more you've got in the techniques, the greater your canvas. The more you can change and put different quirks and connotations to the actual design, and the more skill factor you're going to have, and the more you can experiment. But not only that, you can translate this to other decor, you know, larger decor, different sculptures. I do big um, events, and I, although I use these little bits and pieces I'm going to show you today, I expand that into the larger designs and things. Uh, hopefully the boys will show you a, a quick one of uh, one or two of the events I've done. But today we are concentrating on the smaller stuff. And um, the first thing I'll do is talk about the different blooms that we're going to use. So we've got 160 cues. They're all going to be Qualtex blooms because they're the very best of, of course. And uh, 260s. 
three fifties, six four sixes. We got five inch round, eleven inch, sixteen inch. We've also got hearts. I'm showing you all the blush here, but we've also got um, mocha. We've also got chocolate brown. So there's quite a few colors we can use for all the skin tones as well. Now, other than that, we've got blossoms and then we've got our tools. Now, in my little tool package, obviously, is our pumps. I also use uh, a nitrogen tank with an extension hose because some of my designs I do and I find that using nitrogen it ex extends the life of it because obviously the molecules are much larger. Um, we also have um, tools for stuff things. This one I use on 646s. We've got a needle. I've got a special stuffing tool that Russell Wells made me. There you are, Russell, give a shout out. Um, but I've lost it because we're changing the shop around a little bit. So uh, you can use a blue stick as well, different sizes. Um, our pens, all different pens we've got here. But basically I use Sharpies and Eddings because these are great for the, the eyes and what's the eyes, a little... Um, sort of detailed things that we need to do. In the tool section, we also have our scissors and our, <coughs> our castration, can't even say the word, castration pliers. And adhesives, also we use um, some uh, sticky dots. Sometimes I use a stretchy tape as well. Bloom bond. I also use these as well, which are Apex blue dots, which are really good. Our bloom bond. And uh, I also use some of this as well. It's always a Oasis double sided tape. So, you know, some people don't like using stick. I don't use a lot of the adhesives, but sometimes they can come in handy and save time as well. Um, sometimes if you use too many of them, it can cause a few problems. And, if it's warm, they, they don't stick so well. Right. I should say in the cold weather, they don't stick so well. So there we are. That's all our bits and pieces. Now we've got all different types of techniques. I'll show you a couple of them. First of all, we've got our bubble. Now, when we're working with bubbles and the balloons, I always say to people, make sure that the balloon is soft, especially doing these caricatures, because... When we're doing the twisting, we're going to be adding and adding and adding. And as we add, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually it's going to pop, especially if it's going to go from this lukewarm into the hot or from the cold into the warm. So we've got to remember that as well. So, our little bubble. Then we've got two bubbles together. Got them. And if we roll them over, we've got two pinch twists. We do one pinch twist, two pinch twists. We can add another one in there. Small little loop like that. Twist around. And then we've got a small button nose. Yeah. And if we want to. I'll just stretch this a little bit a minute. Cut that off there. Waste not, want not. Good. No. Tie that there. Give it a gentle squeeze. And there we've got a big nose, the nostrils, and a big blob on the end. Because some, some people like boxers have got a puffy nose on the end. Looks a bit rude sometimes. Um, then we've got um, our loop twist. Which is basically a loop, like so. Okay. These can be used for ears, chins, lots of other things, which I'll show you. If we use rounds, this is a, a, a round bloom and it's twisted in half. We've got uh, the chin, cheeks. 
we use the apple twist and the tulip twist. Obviously the tulip twist. Push that inside. Grab the knot. Gently pull your finger out. Twist around. And there you have a tie. Okay. Or you can use that for a new part of the year, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about later. We've got an apple twist, which I'll show you now. It's the same principle as the other one. Pull the glue nut, stretch it, put your finger in there, push right to the centre, grab the knot like so, pull and twist. Get a scrap of balloon like so, wrap it around and tie off. Okay, that's our apple tip. And we can also add another piece on the other end there so we got two um, attachment points because we can use that for a chin as well. Some people have got really fat necks. Uh, we've got the shock twist, and with the shock twist, An easy one to do. Oops. Let's take one of these. Now a shock twist is basically when you shock the balloon, pinch it, you can change the direction like so. I can rechange the direction of that one. There we go. And we can turn it into a square if you want to. Okay. I'll bring that one around there now. And by using a shock twist, we can get different shapes. We've also got a sidewall bubble. Now these are good, which I'll, I hopefully will show you one later on. Now a sidewall bubble takes a bit of practice. Hope I can still do them as well as I usually do. Now you take the balloon and you basically grab a piece of the balloon like so. There you go. And that's what you call a sidewall bubble or small bubble. So if I was doing a tiny character, that's his nose. Or I could do it slightly bigger. And then if I'll just show you with all what it is all year. Now what I'm going to do is just do a couple of bubbles here and I can show you what I mean by the Sometimes, when you're doing small characters, you don't need lots of detail, but using all the different techniques, you don't have to use so much detail. Sometimes you can do it with artwork and get, get your um, finishing details in. So I'll make them a slightly bigger nose, and you can have a squarish head. So I pinch that on the side wall like so. Then I come in, push this inside here, and there we have our eyes, okay? And we've got our little oval shaped head. Now I can add eyebrows to them if I wanted to. And a few other bits and pieces. So there's a few of the techniques and as we go along, I'll explain a few of the others as well. Now, when we look at caricatures, most important thing is the client is paying for it. So we must establish, first of all, if they have a budget. But it's not, you shouldn't be asking that straight away because you should know the different levels of uh, different levels that you have for the, diff the different price ranges, I should say. Sorry, getting a bit confused myself. The different price ranges of the characters that you make because we make a small one, medium, uh, life size, and gigantic ones. And now, the more detail that goes in, the more of your skill goes in there. So that is time and time is money. And I, I think there's a lot of people out there, especially a lot of the new people, it, it is hard to price properly, but it's a very essential part of the business is pricing properly and learning that. It's a major skill for any business starting out. So have a look at that. If anyone's doing that on this course, please look at it. Uh, I always emphasize that it's important. So that is an important thing. So the next thing is I also ask a talk about the person themselves. Um, What's their hobbies, their likes? Are they a footballer, a fisherman, 
do they like sport ballerina i've done a couple of them i've done fishermen um i've done a couple of golf well i've done loads of golfers to be actual fact i've done quite a few footballers and hopefully the boys i'll show you one or two as i talk through um here and and post them up to this side or to, Oh, as Dennis the man's keep an eye on us, or I should keep, keep an eye on him. Um, so they post some pictures up so we, I can talk through them. Um, the golfer I uh, mentioned just now, uh, then a few of them, then a couple of basic ones. There was one, I think it was a blue blue golfer, and uh, just some basic details, uh, just a loop for his chin, a little bit of white, straight flat white bits for his, for his hat, uh, sorry, for his hair, and a few basic details on his body but i put in the core elements and when the wife came to get it, or the grandmother came with the grandson he was at the, the the entrance of the shop it was across the other side and he showed nanny nanny there's there's grumpy there's grumpy so you know even with the basic principles it, it can show that you you can get there and um it, it makes my day when we get reactions like that so yeah um, and that's why I love doing this job. I, I got a passion for it, and I like that's why I like sharing it with everybody else because we've got to keep this skill level as high as we can. I keep striving to go further as myself. Um, so that's the golfer. I also done the green golfer. Now with him, he he was fanatical about golfing, and he always wore wore sunglasses. So I used that on his head and the right color that he used to wear all the time made a golf bag as well so you know that it was a special birthday so i the the first one i think was around the 75 year mark and the other one was a, a younger man and uh he, he he was fanatical about golfing so they wanted to give him something when they've got everything something like a sculpture that they spend on can mean something really special because they've gone to town on something for them that's for the person who's got everything and you can give them something else, a memorable occasion. And they still come in the shop now and talk about it. Okay. Um, so there is a few things. Now, once I talk to the customers, talk about their um, their things, what they, their hobbies, etc., and what they do, the colours they wear, I ask for a photograph if they can have a, a proper caricature of them. And depending on what they're going to spend, I tell them how much it would cost for this or this. And they never really go mid range or, or top range. And then you can think, all right, OK, I need a photograph. So once you get a photograph, you look at it, something that they that of their interest. So if it's a footballer, uh, there's an example of a footballer. I think he's wearing all red. Now, he's got black hair and I concentrated on his facial features because obviously him being in football gear is great, but um, again, not too detailed, but enough to show that it was him at the first glance and his proper shirt. So I'd done that off a photograph. Right. A few other things I've done um, is uh, oh, an RNLI uh, stand. He, he was... Uh, a little bit more than nice size, but he was one of their characters that um, they use for uh, public uh, for uh, fundraising and other things like that, and at special events. So they sent me a, a photograph of that, and they wanted because he's a um, a character that walks around and meets the children, and as I said, raises money. So they wanted me to make that. So I made him on the scale of the actual character. So again, simple features, a bit more detailed in the in the twisting because I've done a lot of, of weaving, etc. But it turned out great. So hopefully the boys have just showed you that photograph. And um, it just goes to show if you do the, the simple features, it, it can be identifiable as well. You don't have to go to the full lengths as always. So let's start on the, the, the structures as well. Because we, we talked about the photograph, being a footballer, dancer, etc. Or, or if he plays a guitar, there's another, well, I've done quite a few different types. A gentleman, it was a large gentleman, he, he played guitar. So I featured on his guitar and, and the colours on the photograph that they sent me as well and his, his facial features. I did a few more bits and pieces in there. Now, when you look at the photograph, you need to break it down into its elements. So say, look at the body, right? Uh, do I need to go detailed on the body? Is it a straight body? 
uh, they, they've got a bit of a, a pot belly or is it a lady they've got a nice curved body or a, a dress so you need to look at them bits as well as the facial features because sometimes I've, I've made um some celebrities one was with um that i can recall at the minute was um tim weathercock um i can't pronounce his name you know he was from antiques roadshow and um he was I made him with a, a full size head, but I made him a tiny body, so it was like a real caricature. So uh, that, was, that was a fun job to do, and uh, he took it on with him as well. <laughs> so uh, he, I think he enjoyed it as well. He, he laughed quite well at the, on, the, on the scene. Um, so the facial features, let's have a look at that as well now. So we look at the face. Um, is it an oval face? Is it like an hourglass face? Uh, is it a square face? So we need to look at that, the structure side of it so um we can make the structures out of 260s it depends on the size we're using as well because i've done a lot of 646 ones as well um with that one i actually did the um bfg now i've done a few different bfgs some of them just about this high and some i've done about eight nine foot tall and in there i've used lots of elements but simple uh design using lots of loops um to make it uh, a de not detailed but to get his uh, age in there as well so you'll, you'll see from the photograph okay so this is a square face that I use it's a basic design I shall show you how to make this in a moment now with a basic design it, it, it's the foundation of every face so here we've got a long jaw line and a big chin um, this this one here is a little bit like an hourglass so it's simple they're all little squares it's like a puzzle or, or, or lego we're creating building blocks so what i shall do is show you when we squeeze a balloon make it nice and soft as i said we always like to work off soft bubbles now i did plan to do a photograph but i've forgotten the photograph i'm sorry <laughs> and i don't want to stop the video to go and get it because it's very late at night so i'm, I'm going to create a character for you so first of all again what we're going to do is make a soft bubble so I'm just going to move something in a moment and i'll show you a character shortly but to make the head so i make a soft bubble like this do quite a few twists in there because it allows us to attach and put things in there without stressing the blue knot give it another squeeze a little roll down like so and then I need to extend it a bit like the other jawline. So what I'm going to do is squeeze again, make it soft. So there we go. Just a few bits in the, in the end there. And then do a little jawline there. Then squeeze again. Get the same size on this side. I can pull it in. Give it a twist. There we go, and then come to the top there. Give that a little bit of a twist, and there we go. And we've run out of bloom. But I've got enough there to tie on the end. We can always add a bloom into it. There we go, like so. And then I get my scissors. And get me cut them off. Make sure you do two knots there so it doesn't come undone. It's the last thing you want. <laughs> okay, so there we are, the basic principle. Now we can use a 350 or a 260 cube. So I'm going to use a 260. And all I'm going to do is just loop it in here, like so. Right. Now, I don't use a straight line across here, because it, if I twist something into that, it's going to cause it pressure. So what I do, make a bubble. Now, again, it depends whether I want to come in and make a narrow face or whatever so what i do is make a couple of bubbles and this one i'm going to go slightly narrower and then twist that around two times and then come back in and slightly bigger on this one if you can see yeah Yeah, keep it round. 
Now at this point, sometimes I, I put a pinch twist there and a pinch twist on the other side here. Now you can see these bubbles are quite loose. Well, that one's the softest. And I can attach, and there's a nice gap in there to, to put little elements, because we will add with the hair and everything else. No. Then give that another squeeze. And this time I'm going to put a little loop in there. You can decide whether this is going to be our ear or not. So we put a loop in there, and I can twist it around a few times. And then if I want to, I want to create bags under the eyes, a section for the eyes. Just twist it around, then twist it around. And then I can make the same shape as I did on that side, and the same size, which is roughly the same. Loop it there like so, a couple of times. And then all I've got to do is push it in and loop it round. There we go. So we've got one bubble at the back, two at the front. And I can repeat that if I want to at the back. Get rid of that piece. There you are. Okay, so now we've got a part of our head. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is create the, um, the, the forehead. Now with the forehead, we can use a 646. Oh, there it is, right there. Print him up. So if you wanted a giant forehead, uh, create a, uh, a ball head or whatever. Now I can place this against the head, squeeze it, and then decide, is that big enough for the forehead? Then or bigger or smaller. Twist it quite a few times. Come around like now on this side I can make it smaller or bigger at the back. And sometimes I, I just tend to go a little bit smaller on the back. It gives me a chance to attach and things. And sometimes I might put a bubble in the back so I can tie on to it. Tighten the knot in there, cut that off. I save that because I can use that possibly for a big bulging nose, a box or something like that. Now, I don't want too many bits on here. There's not much there, but that's a bit bulky. But we'll hide that. Now, what I can do is just roll that into here, like that, and it's just fitted in nicely. So now I've got a nice big bulging forehead there. Okay, and then we can create a nice nose. Now, depends on what sort of nose you want. We can make a small button nose. And what I've done here is basically two pinch twists. As I say, I can put a, a button on there like so. So he's got a button nose. And then I can put that there like so. Okay, so that's creating uh, quite a bit of definition and with this one here the hourglass shape with this one here now we can do the same thing and add and add and add so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a, a, a character that one that I made earlier um, here we go this uh, is a member of royalty I, I hope you can see what it is now with this one here I've done a simple body and the main features here are the ears, the nose, and the teeth, and obviously the grey hair. So it's uh, Charles, obviously. And I, I hope you can see him anyway. I can see him. It's in the be eye of the beholder. And as you can see here, whoops, I, there's this tie, so we can fix that. All I did there was put a tulip twist and tied it to the neck there, and I used a little blue dot on either side just to hold it in position. Um, his teeth here, there's a pinch line twist. Oh, I'll show you that one shortly. And then all, all the rest of it is loops. And we've used a bit of glue here to give it a bit more definition. Oh, and I haven't quite finished off there to do it. And simple hands. So that is Charles. Now the other one uh, uh, I've done to show you today is um, 
a British icon. I've run out of green, so I've had to put blue in on this side. But as you can see, that's our lovely Elton John. Okay, and it's prime. Now, with Elton, we've got the glasses. So if you look at the photo, uh, um, boys, show you the photo. You look at Elton, it's his ears, um, his, his nose, his glasses, and his chin. Now, the chin's not on there. I wanted to show you that there's a few ways we can do the chin. So I could add the chin there, accentuate it a little bit more, because he's got a little bit of a dimple on there with the, you know, if we can accentuate that, because that's part of his facial feature. So as I say, like with mine, um, I'm going gray, I've got an oval face. So I bring the chin down a little bit more, make my nose prominent, sink the eyes back, make my ears a little bit bigger. It's, look at a few photographs of, of caricatures and things like that. And it'll give you an idea of how people look at caricaturists, look at people and how they pick the different parts of the body. And I do the same thing. And when I look at other pictures and things, I pull them apart and say, what can I use for that, 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 and that? And it, and it grows. I can look at something usually and know what I'm going to use for it. But that comes with practice, practice, and practice. And knowing all your techniques. Because the more you've got, as I said earlier on, the more you can do. And there we are. We've got it in my chin there, and it adds more to his character again. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make his, his head. Okay? So if I put him by here in a minute. Anyway, you stay bit. And obviously, the other thing is, he has brightly coloured clothes. I've done purple here with his, his, his shirt, a little bit there. Added the, 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 the chrome in it. Has a bit more value, obviously. But it's more to the character. There we go. Stay there, please. There's a good one. Let's get our uh, 350Q. Yeah. I've done... <coughs> prepared this one earlier so what I'm going to do as you can see I've got the forehead two sides and cheek so I'm going to tie this in now and then what I'm going to do is come up this side here I'm going to do a double wall on this one okay so we're coming up and I'm going to pinch this in the corner here. There we go. And then come back up here. Wrap it round. Tight now. There we go. Hold on. Okay. So there we are so far. Now we're back in the side now with another piece. Pinch twist it. Make sure it's the same size as the other one. So we have to make it a little bit bigger. Sorry for all the speaking. Okay. There we go. 
no, we need to create support for the eyes now. So we're going to take a, a 260Q, tie it to one side of the pinch twist, like so, and create two sets of bubbles from one side to the other. Even plenty of elasticity in between by so twisting a few times. And then tying that around there. And do another one on the on the back now. See? And I always give it a few turns so that you can latch it around the window top in. So there we go. So we've got them two in there to support. Now I'm going to create like a, another bridge going across here, two of them. They're going to be slightly bigger. Part of the years now. So we've got the front part of there. Now the other piece I want to create is the is the mouth line and the chin lower chin line. So I'm going to bring this piece around and make it soft and can tuck in. Cut this piece off because it's not long enough. Tie that in. That tucks underneath there, and then I'm going to put a smaller one underneath there. Now this one's going to be about two inches, just. Just under two inches shorter. You see that? Back it around at least three times. And then I'm going to put two pieces around the back to help push the head up. That's the first one. And then the second one. So, I push all these into place now. So, I'm going to put here. Now I'm going to put the eyes in. Uh, I've got two bits and what I've done is just tied a little knot in between the two there. Again we're going to use the earpiece to tie it in. Now that sits between the two pieces inside. The eyes are going into place now. Now I'm going to make the nose. Puff this up. 
Okay. Now the nose has got two little pinchy twists there, so we're going to do, yeah, that should be quite right. Make these nice and soft. Put them together. One one way, the other one backwards. Like so. Okay. Then we're going to create the little button. Like so. That's right. And then this is going to go in over them at the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is to tie it in. So the first piece. Oops. Lost the bottom. So I'll replace that. What I'll do is I'll use a bit of 160 to So, just put it around the joint. That way, please. Line it up. Get the eyes in place. And then what I'm going to do is measure from here to here. And give it a, quite a few twists in. Push it right through to the back. Okay. And then when we come on the back, I'm going to push it down between them two and have it poking out at the bottom. Back out again, and then yes, I tie it into the, the the second bubble at the back there because it'll be a bit tighter for me. So create a pinch twist. Tie a knot in it. There we go, and then. And see inside, I'm going to attach it to that one rather than bringing it all the way down. And that will make it a little bit tighter. Create another small bubble over the top of these with a 350Q. Nice and soft. Give it a good squeeze. There we go, I think that should be it. Yep. And I can cut this piece off here. to the other side. There we go. And then that little piece there close the gap a little bit. There we now we can stick the ears in. So what I've done is done a couple of loops and I'm going to push these loops into here. Push them all the way around. Just and then push them back. Okay. And then what we can do, we can put that bubble flat. 
Is that like that? Just get one, so it locks in. There. Now the next thing to do is going to do a shock to it. So we pull them together there, down, round. Squeeze and pinch like that. Same on the other side. Squeeze together, pinch. Then we can use the dots or the, the bond. There we are. Oops. It's a bit sticky, it's like chewing gum. <laughs> so Get a fresh piece. And I'm going to just push that together. Push it underneath. Hold it. Keep it together so it fits nice. Peel it off. And then push that piece up and twist it a little bit. So it twists that way. Hold it for a few seconds. And then it holds into place, and then do the same to the other side. So these are about an inch long. Try not to touch it because uh, it takes the adhesion away. So poke it up again like this, lay it inside, squeeze it flat like that. Give it a second or two, and then it should peel off. Give it a little bit of a rub. It should peel off. Push on the bottom up and twist. Hold it. Good job. As easy as. Now, the next thing we're going to do is some of this hair, which is um, blonde. So I'm going to use gold to uh, 160 cube. So, I'm going to take this. He's not running away. Try this into his ear. It's a little bit awkward at this stage. So a nimble finger. So up to here. Now as you can see, he's got a couple of bits sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across the front of it and I use a to make things easy, I'm gonna make a one section. And then tie it into place. Don't have it too tight, a little bit of um, flexibility in it. Go across the other side for the squeeze and do the same thing on that side with a bit of one side. There we go. And then I'm going to go back down to the ear again, just to put the, the, the flat piece in the ear. So I'm going to need to squeeze that a little bit and create, don't have any air in there. And normally I'd roll that around a few times. Because if it pops, it won't all unravel. And back up to the side and then just repeat the same thing back. There we are. And over the front. Back down to the side. Tie it back in. 
coming back down to the other side and give it a squeeze so you know it fits. And I want you to twist that a few times. <coughs> you know, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> and then I tie a knot just in case I let go of it. That's happened a few times. And then tuck it in. Wrap it round. Now, there's the basis of it. Oops, come here, as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these pieces in. And all they are is just a couple of loop twists. And I've tied them the end to give it like a strand effect. And then I can use this, I already left them pieces on to tie them. You cut them off. And I'll use this. And what I'll do is poke it into the joint there. Put it, put it back. Now it is a little bit big, so all right, so that's going to come across there like so. Okay. Now I can either put a bit of um, 160 through there, or I can cheat again and use a bit of bond. And use a longer piece this time. Go across there. And if you warm it up, you'll find it's much better. And cause friction burns in here. Right. So pull this one back. That means roll over and twist. Hold it firmly again for a few minutes or seconds. There we go. And then on the other side, we've got two lots. So I'm going to tie that one into there. Put these pieces off first. And what I've done there, I've actually tucked it into the into the head there. And then I've pulled it around. And help anchor it underneath and tie it off. And then, I, what I should have done is use gold on this naughty boy bob. And then it all blends in with the same colour. But it's nice and tight anyway, so you're not going to see it. So, I pull this in, tuck it underneath. Uh, the fingers. That's why I keep it a little bit loose, and when it shrinks, then it's not too tight. As you can see, that one goes slightly underneath the other one. So I'll tie it in here, and then I'll use this piece to tie any more hair in. There we go. Hope this is all clear enough for you. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another piece of hair down there to help push it forward. So, tight into the ear again, and push in firmly there, twist it, then you just push it down there, it'll come up underneath the hair. So I've given myself plenty of play. Tie in. I'm going to cut that piece off now. And then take this one over to the other side and just repeat what we've just done again. Remember what I said, twist it a few times because it gets tighter around this bit here and there's a liability that it's going to pop. So I squeeze it in, push it in with my thumb and finger and just let it take it straight in. And then 
as you can see it's easy if you make it thin and put add a little bit of line to it and then i can come up back up here finish it off obviously you can keep adding the air all the way through but i'm not going to do it on this one because you know the format we'll come back on this side tuck it underneath and then on the end as we did on the last one twist it and hold it because quite a few times in the past i've lost balloons being silly. there we go no we're getting to the basis of it now. Now to help this one come across, I'm going to put a bit of glue on that one. Okay. There we go. Got to find the end of it now. If I can get away without using the, the glue additions, I will. And it's the nice thing is it blends in with the actual skin. Press hard on there. As you can see, it's just actually turning up now. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, his, his teeth. Okay. His teeth. Which is a um, white balloon. White balloon, white balloon. There we go. His teeth. Now, I'm going to squeeze this nice and soft. He's going to pinch twist line. So we can put the two together to start with if you want to. Twist inside. And then twist it down. So what I'm going to do, I can use that as a, a tying in piece. You know, sometimes I make it much longer or I might tie in the same colour as the skin so that it blends in. I'll put with a pinch line twist. This is the way I do it. Okay. Put my thumb and finger there, twist several times and squeeze in and pull in down at the same time. And make the bubbles the same size as this. Now you need to check so they're not going to be too big. So they might be, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. That's because I'm talking. Right, here we go. Take a pinch, make it nice and soft. And make two bubbles soft, twist them round, and then you can use that to twist, twist some of them down, twist it round because you're creating a little bit of elasticity. You don't want it too tight, you just want a bit of freedom of movement. There we go, round and round, about three to four times at minimum. Then push that one in there, like so. Can you see what's happening there? Repeat it. off there that that go so that's going to be the one side and then on the other side i think it's yeah and they're going down a little bit so i'll make some more on this side just repeat the process again obviously if you're not talking like i am you can do it reasonably quick going to check it with the mouth. I'll do one more on this side. See I've run out of blue there so I can chop it off. Use that as a connection point. And just add a balloon into it. If you tie or twist it in properly it'll be fun. 
Well, I'm going to spin that up because I don't want that inside there, so just twist it around into a figure of eight. Just cut that piece off then, and then that's not protruding through. There we go, on the other side. When it comes to the end, you can either tie a knot in it or go into the figure of eight a few times. I'm just going to slide them in and have them come in under the pressure. So, that's going to go down. Push it in there. Then you're going to get the other set. Now you see, you can tie it in there. Nice big smile. I've got to put plenty of twists in because otherwise they're going to go down quick. And push that into the other side. Take that, stop them. Then I'm going to create a gap in between the two there. What I need to do is push these ears back into the centre here, in between the, the hair, same on this side. And then that helps push the hair up. And then I'm going to bring another 350 kg in. down on the side a little bit bigger to make the sheets a bit puffy. There you go. Be nice and puffy. Again, it's a scrap. Tie it in. If you want to, you can come across there. I'm going to cut that piece off. And just repeat, repeat the process again. Come on now. Here you go. You're a rock star. So I'm using that piece there to tie it into the neck. Push it so it's nice and soft and make it bigger so it bends out. And you can squeeze it to a bit of shape. Bit of scrap again. Hold it and twist it. Then it down slowly. Tie it to the other two. Just back there. Now, as we move that around. 
just push the ears out so you just manipulate it back into place there we go the teeth could have been a little bit smaller i think there we go chin his eyes and then we need to oh yes his chin what do i do with that yeah so as i said earlier you can stick this piece in okay but i'm going to do his eyes next and what i'm going to do is bring the eyes forward pull them forward and pinch them between these two and to bring the nose up what i can do i can either put a bit of line outside a bit of a bloom between there i should have done this earlier um I did mention it on, on the other piece we did, and then I can pull it through and help anchor on here like I did with the earlier piece. So, all, all else feeling, a little bit of uh, bond. So you don't like to use too much of it, it sometimes has, a, has an adverse effect. Not always, depends on temperature. So yeah, so long in the position. Hold it down, okay. and there he is. So the next thing I'm going to do is sit in the eyes forward, straighten the nose out. I can get rid of that. Now with the eyes, Black in the centre. And we're going to use some brown. As I said, when I do this, I tend to swirl it round and round so it gives an, the appearance of an eye. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. chin in and then the next thing is the glasses so I've made some here and all I've done is some buff there I'll show you to do this now put them into the nostrils We can make them as big or as small as we want to. There we go. And what we do for that is we actually take a bloom. And when I use a chrome, I tend to stretch it a little bit first. Force the air down, keep hold of it, push it down again until you've got a nice bit of air in there. Tie a knot in the end, get it to the size that you want to, and then just tie. There you go. Ha ha. Give him a minute. Monocle. <laughs> There we are. So, and then we can stick this. Yeah. So we can stick our chin on. A couple of things we've forgotten. This is earrings. What kind of earrings we give him? 
He's got silver in the other one. I think we'll give him green earrings this time. And all they are is a couple of pinch twists. Oops, hang on, that's going down. We'll give him purple ones instead. It's all in the detail, as I always say. Um, the more detail you can add in, the more value you're adding, the more money you're adding. And um, but it makes the character a bit more authentic as well. Like with the fisherman I told you about, I, um, I added in the crab. And um, what else did I do? Oh, uh, I put one, a crab in one hand and a fish in his other hand. And he was going thin on top, so I've done that as well. I also done a, a gentleman uh, who had broke his leg and he had a boot on and a crutch. So, um, and he's always getting into the wars, so his wife wanted me to duplicate the photograph of him, so I did. I think the boys will show me now. Um, I've also done uh, a mountain rescue. Uh, gentleman it was his retirement and what happened was they they come to see me i'm just going to put these underneath here and he was retiring and they said we want to present it to him on, on mount snowden i thought oh blimey so um they had all chipped together to, to pay for it and i also made his dog as well and I've got actually got a photograph of them up on on Snowden here, with them all together, and and the dog and his, his uh, other dog. This is pretty cool, and uh, it makes me smile. There we are. You can see it coming together now. And he puts his chin on. Oops, upside down, Bob. There we are. We've got Elton John again. Okay, right, so we put Elton up for a minute. Now, there's lots of things we can do to the characters and different techniques, as I showed you. I wanted to show you um, other ways doing the nose, getting the shapes. So, what I've done here, um, I've cut a 260, about uh, three to four inches. And I've got a 160, and I'm going to insert that inside there, Oops. like so. With a little bit left on the end. You can pull him out a bit because you don't want him right to the tip. Now, sometimes I'll tie a knot in there. Well, I'll do that now, actually. So that secures that inside. Then I'm going to use a 160 pump and blow the 260 up, cut the puffs. two puffs like that and I'm going to blow the what oh, it's gone out doesn't matter but if I'm using a lot more I would make sure I leave the air inside but because I'm using it smaller it's not a problem there's, there's not so much pressure on it so I can do it without inflating that side but sometimes it does help and I'll show you why so I'm gonna oops do that again. Yeah, cut that. Cut the one sixty. Push it inside. There we go. There we are. And don't forget, if it doesn't uh, go all the way in, you can use your stuffing tool. To push it all the way in all right there now then let's put that in there put make a knot yeah so they're both tied together and i'll just puff the inside one up like you said push that right inside so it goes there's the top of the pump there and it's basically a reverse inflation. No, I could leave it like that if I wanted to. I'm going to 
twist that around my finger, hold it, and then pump the outer blue, three pumps, squeeze the air down while still holding that, and then we've got a, a flat nose, tie the end, so none of the air comes out, and squeeze, and then we've got a fat piece there. Now sometimes I leave a piece on the end so I can do the nostrils. So we'll add them on now. There we go. Put two little nostrils on there. There we go. Put it on. And because when you do it the, the nostrils, if you do it that way, what happens is sometimes like with Charlie here, his, his nose was flat and sometimes they can go with the, with the um, heat, they can expand. So it's lost the shape. So if I put another balloon inside there, I could have shaped it and kept the shape. But then it's all down to cost as well. So then I can twist that into there. And then I've got myself a nice nose, which I could add on to my character there. If I want to, I can make it push a bit more so I can bend the nose. And now we have a more of a twisted nose. Oh, that's right. I'll obviously tie that when I put it in there. But there's different ways of getting different shapes on the nose. Um, we can also, if I puff this one up, we can use our little pliers I showed you earlier on. Now this is for a small nose that you could stick onto a round face. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. I can squeeze that down to get the shape if I want to. Hold it there. No, I don't have to tie that there. It does help. There we go. And then just put a little bit on the end there like so. Hold it in place so it bends. Pre-stretch this one here, take the nose, we're going to get our castration pliers, push that on there, excuse me, there we go, stretch it, okay, and then I can gently insert that, I don't know if I've done it too big, but we'll see, release, and then I can Place a straw inside. And suck the air out. Try a knot on it. And say for example we're gonna have well, what we could do as well, I'll do this for you now, is we've got a, an 11 inch balloon, we, oh, we, I'll tell you what, we'll use a 16 inch balloon and we'll put a couple of the 5 inch in and make a, um, a, distorted, a distorted face. I'll just show you how the principle works. So what I've done here now, there it's done a minute. So the 16 inches pre-inflated, it's better to use this because you've got more uh, rigidity to the wall. So I'm using five inch inside. And then one, two, three. I'm counting my puffs. And I'm gonna tie that. So it's nice and firm. I've got that. Push it off. Give it a few cuts on the blue. One, two, three. 
Uh, got another blue sticking inside, like so. Popping this right there, like that. Three again. Tie it. Cut it off. Now they've got two blooms inside there now. Now it depends what shape of head you want in there. And with practice, it's worth doing it like this for a while. It does hurt your hands, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Push that one inside. And if you lose the air, you can reinflate it, obviously. I've done two and a half on that one. Uh, then I'll cut this then. Doobie doobie doo. Pull it up. And I'll put another one inside. There we go. All I'm doing is using the straw, popping it in, releasing my thumb and finger, and then it. There we are. And then do that one there. You can always let a bit of air out if you want to. Pop it off. And then I might put one last one in there. Pump it up. And this one I'm going to do about one and a half pumps on it. Push them in up the way. One and a bit. There we go. I'm tying that to me. I could do lots of things on this. I think, I'm not sure a few people did it last year actually uh, in the convention. Oh, there you are. There's, there's one shape head already. We've got a big bulb of a snows two side cheeks and a, and a tiny forehead and uh, a tiny chin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inflate this now and I'm going to use that small bloom to separate them in the centre. So I'm just going to push against them, force the air out, like so. I'm going to do it again. It okay. Now this time I'm going to stick my nose inside or I can stick it on the outside. I can use the pliers or I can just basically stretch it and put it inside. time you can force the balloon around and get it into position just, just a little bit of manipulation I think we're almost there that's where I want it and I'm going to force it to this side and gently insert a straw in there oops hang on of course you don't pop the balloon obviously. Let's get a smaller straw. Right, we'll use this one I think. Make sure it's not too sharp. You've got it in the back there. 
and seal up this end here. And then force the air out. Try that one more time. I have to manipulate the balloon inside. And basically all I'm doing is pushing the, putting some air in, pushing the balloons around, and then flicking the air out. There we go. There we are. And there we have, well, I think all the, the bubble inside has just gone down. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I might be able to uh, remedy that. There we go. And try some air out. Here we go. I'm going to make a good seal around here to do this. I've got a little um, foil pump that I can put on reverse, and I tend to do that usually, but I'm saving time. Where's it gone? Get it back inside. It doesn't pop. There we are. Sorry, I'm not in it. No. Can we work around? I'm going to control the face on. Using the net in, we can do the eyes. I think this one's running out. Yes, I think so. There we go, try that one in. That's better. Some spooky character this one is. <laughs> Usually let that dry. Oh, the eyes, they say tell a lot. Okay, now do the same thing again. Obviously I'd normally wait for this to dry a little bit. And I can put a mouth in. Obviously add the eyes and everything else to it. And then you can do a distorted face. Add the ears on, etc. So that's another way of doing distortion. But I wanted to show you using 260s, 350s, 646s. And also remember stretching them for finer details. So that was a 160 stretch using the nitrogen. And what I can do with this, if I wanted to, where's that face? Oh, here we are. This is a, a character I made earlier on. Just wanted to show you that different things can be done to this, like putting eyebrows in. Now, to put an eyebrow in, I've got some this uh, bloom there. And I can either tuck this in underneath, Obviously it's an older person, so we're going to use grey. And bring it to the centre, and then I can take it round the back. Tie it into there. Same thing on the other side. And tie it into the hair. And we've got a bit of a devious character going on here now. Um, we could always add a moustache. Did I do one with a moustache? I think I did. 
I think he's fallen on the floor. One second. Ah, there he is down over here. This is a bit like the basic body build I did. Um, his head. Because he's got the leggings of an old strong man from the circus. I've done a few of these strong men. Um, and one character, he, he had a really he was all neck and the lady asked me to accentuate that and he was only small I made but he looks a bit odd which they were they were very happy with it and I also made a young muscle man and um, oh gosh I've made so many different things um, I also made a mechanic a young mechanic 16 year old who was uh, just becoming an apprentice and got all mud I've done a runner as well and, and just put some brown on there to give it a bit of character so you could see he was a, a fell runner. Uh, so there's, there's lots of things you can do um, put in the details because all the little finer details make all the difference. And um, as I say, the pen is a great thing to use as well. Not everyone's a mass of it. Just practice on different balloons. Get a plain balloon and draw a face. Just like here we've got um, Dennis the Menace. You know, it's a simple thing, but it creates the entire face without having to do too much twisting. Sometimes it's it's great to do that, but it might not be in their budget. So I quite often use uh, a quick link and I put a few uh, five inch in there to give it a bit of a shape. These are great for oval heads because you've got an attachment either side. Um, and if you haven't got an attachment, you can always use a raisin twist. Now, to use a raisin twist, the balloon has to be quite soft. So or you can stick the knots inside or beads, whatever you want. But I always tend to put them on the outside. I find the location where I want to put it, push it in, and, and tuck it in with my finger, pinch with my thumb, and pushing it under like that. Grab with the other finger and hold it. One, two. Obviously, the balloon has to be soft, otherwise, bang. And then take, um, usually a 160 is, is ideal. And then I hook it into my finger like so, stretch it round a couple of times, tie it off. And there you've got an attachment point for the hair, the nose. And put the hair either side. We can attach the ears on. What we've got here, we've got a couple of ears here. here. There's that other ear. There's another ear here. Done with the apple twist, obviously. Let's have a look. Now, I can, oops, with these ones, I've done them off centre. So we've got a couple of round ears now. If I stick another knot in the centre. I think I'm getting close to the time, so I'll just show you a couple of bits here now. Tie that on there. Move this one. And then tie a knot in it. And I said to you earlier on, I had a 646. I could use a 350Q or whatever and just do a button nose on there. Tie that on. Once you've got all these skills and mastered all these techniques, there's lots more we could use. You can create endless characters. Here we go. Try that one there. Well, I could have left a bit on there to put eyebrows on.
here we are. We've got a pretty fun character. A bit of brown hair now as well. Just This is a quick one. All I'm doing is twisting around the top, just them together. And what I can do to create a bit of detail is put a little loop there, take it around the back, underneath, back down to it here, and then I've created a little wisp in the hair. And you can do that, and like we did with um, Elton. Put a couple of hair there, turn it around, and we've got an other mouth. Let's put a quick iron mouth in there. And say with the BFG, I use this sort of system, and all the loops it was much quicker to use, and it got a huge character. It was I think it was about eight, eight foot plus tall. Um, and this is a cute character. I can cut that off and I can add other bits in there, a little neck on here. You know, not just characters. You can do cartoon characters. You can do all sorts using all these different techniques. Now, um, I'd love to show you lots and lots more. Uh, we've got another character here. Okay, this is an older one. A couple of bits have gone down, but I've done the eyebrows on there, and two bits have popped on there. So I'm going to stick some teeth in there for you, and then you can see, because we, obviously we add black in there, we can add age or neglect. You know what I mean? Like a pirate, you know, a bit of evil. So there we go. Um, I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into the world of twisting characters and uh, you've got some ideas now to put together you know um, if you can put your you know your other skills if you if you were a decorator you can add these into arches and columns and things like that and just the heads I've done numbers um, for children giant number seven foot and add the characters heads poking through on either side and it's made a bit of fun as well so um and I, I love doing what I do. And when you can do things like this and people can share it with you, it's fantastic. And it, as I said earlier on, it's always a talking point. People come back and, oh, remember I've done that. And yeah, it fills them with joy. Um, I hope I filled you with you and not gone on too much um, and made it as interesting as possible and kept everything clear for you. But there, there are so many other things I could show you. And there's only so much time. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to the boys and the team and Qualitex and for you for taking the time to watch. And I hope it's been of benefit to you, um, even if it's just a small piece uh, to help you out. Um, keep practicing, that's all I say. And have fun while you're doing it. All right. Thanks very much. And I'll say goodbye and hopefully chat to you soon, maybe after this uh, video. Thanks very much then. Bye from South Wales. Thank you very much, Dr. Bob. Indeed. Thank you very much, Dr. Bob. Always a pleasure. What to a character learn. he is. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> you know that uh, Alton John character that he did? I think he made it two weeks before. And he's still standing after all his time. I'm laughing because he practiced that. I did. <laughs> it was it was the only thing that we've ever rehearsed. <laughs> and that that folks, <laughs> it's what rehearsal does. Hey, that is comedy gold, guys. Comedy gold. Another Somewhere. part over. All it is. We're gonna we're gonna have to disappear very very quickly. Yes. Get off here. So what I'm gonna do is preparing in the wings, ready for the next part. I'm gonna put a link in the um in the chat, chat there, which will take you straight over to part four, because we need to switch off and then go back. Oh, as quick as we can. Because in the next part, the first class next part is actually a panel. We've got uh, guests Panel questions. In. 
We have a few questions already been submitted, but think of good questions about design specifically. Yes. Um, so that you can put them to our panelists. This is your we'll chance to ask those questions. Ask, that have been ask the expert. So we're going to do our best to ask the questions that you have uh, in chat to our guests in the next one. But we need to get off right now so that we can get them lined up for you. So follow the link in the description and we'll see you on the other in 28 side. 28 minutes. <laughs> Uh, 28 minutes. Yes. See yes. Less than 28 minutes. We're going to.